15th annual two-stroke world championship here from legendary and iconic Glen Helen Raceway. The sweet smell of pre-mix is in the air. I got goosebumps. I'm so excited. Hello, everybody. I'm Jack Capella from the Cycle Drag YouTube channel. Alongside me, a man that we are so happy to have. We have the luxury of having the test rider from Dirt Bike Magazine, my partner, Mr. Mark Tilly. Always great to see you. This is the one we have waited for. The two-stroke nationals are back. Are you ready for this, Mark? We're, we're here again. We're doing this again. And uh, like you said goosebumps big goosebumps we've seen all kinds of motorcycles out there from all different shapes and sizes brand new bikes old bikes new bikes everything like that I don't know if it gets much better than this. The smell in the air is pretty amazing. Oh, I wish we could permeate <laughs> it through your device. Make sure you guys give this a share. Call, text your friend. Let them know we're live. We've got four big motos coming your way. The Pasha 125 category, the Open category. We've got some of the top riders in the world. And as you eloquently said, not just about the riders, more so about the bikes here at this event. Exactly. There's, there's a wide variety of motorcycles here. Like we said, new bikes, old bikes. 30-year-old motorcycles, we're going to see it all here. Frankenstein motorcycles, oh, we know Carson Brown's that. on some interesting interesting hardware, so uh, it's a great event. That's the vendor row. It's amazing. There's all kinds of people here. Yes, it really is. It's about nostalgia. It's about the essence of the history of the sport, the heritage of the sport. Uh, harking back to a simpler time, the celebration of two strokes, old bikes, new bikes, they're all here at legendary and iconic Glen Helen Raceway. And we're going to find out who's going to walk away with the big money, especially when you talk about the Pasho 125 category, $15,000 up for grabs here today. Yeah, I mean, that's amazing. Uh, Pasha putting up big money for multiple 125 classes, been doing it for a few years now. We got the Open Pro class. I mean, the stage is set for some amazing racing. And as we were saying earlier, the smell. Oh. The smell around the hills of Glen Helen, the sights, the sounds, everything. Vendor row packed, all kinds of people on the line. This is going to be an amazing event. Yes, indeed it is. We want to thank Boys in Factory Racing, all of our great sponsors. Boys in backing that tremendous aerial coverage high above San Bernardino, California. There is no place quite like Glen Helen. Look at that drag strip of a start. And it goes into Talladega Turn, 45-degree banking. And then we go up and down 22 stories. That's how high the elevation is here at Mount St. Glen Helen. Up and down. This course is absolutely awesome. And speaking of this course, we had an opportunity to go on board and, and check it out and see what it's really like to ride Glen Helen. Let's take you to that. All right, guys, welcome to Glen Helen Raceway. This is the starting line right here. We got a full 40 rider gate. It's going to be packed here today for the Open Pro class and for the Posh 150 Open classes. We do a little start on our KTM 300, and this thing is fast. Getting a little wheelie off the line. Now, Glen Helen is known for the extremely long start straightaway into the Talladega first turn. Talladega is, you know, an, a staple and iconic piece of the Glen Helen National Track. We do a tabletop right after this, and this is a new section for the World Two Stroke Championship. We don't use this too often. It's a dog leg left and then into a sweeping left hander. Now we get into an off camber section with a tight right going up the hill. This is going to be rough and choppy today, and uh, it's going to be a, a gnarly spot for making up time on everyone. Then we go all the way to the top of the hill. Now, this is the highest point you get on the Glen Helen National Track. You can kind of see the pits down below. You go all the way down. This section is rougher than it looks. Believe me, the GoPro does not do this justice here today. Uh, inside berm, we got a two options, an inside berm and an outside berm, and we go straight back up the hill. It's kind of like going up and down an elevator. This is a lot steeper than it looks on video. Sharp left, and then go straight back down the hill. I don't even shift right there. I stay in third gear and keep it all the way down the hill. Now you want to stay light on your feet over the, the braking bumps into another little roller left and a roller over this, and then we come into a sweeper corner here. Now you're going to be seeing guys go wide open through this corner as they got a long straightaway going up into the back section. Now this is what they call, I guess, the Valley of Glen Helen, and it's not used only for race days. It's, it's not used during regular practice days, and uh, we got a little step up back here. Now this is a very natural portion where you're going up and down hills, very rough. Um, got some rocks in the back here as well. Then we come into a sharp left-hander. This is 
going to be a tough and challenging one. Lots of kickers and acceleration bumps coming out of here as we go up and over the hip jump. Always kickers on that jump. And we go wide open into a tabletop into the mini velodrome. Uh, this is either the velodrome or the mini Talladega, depending on who you ask. But uh, I like to call it the velodrome. Wide open into another tabletop. And then we're coming into the more, little more sandy section of the track. We've got an inside rut here. And then wide open down another little straightaway into the sand right-hander. This always gets whooped out and gnarly in here. This is one of the more fun sections and challenging sections of Glen Helen National Track. Then we do a right-hander. Now this is where they changed it up again uh, for the World Two Stroke Championships, making things a little bit tighter, a little different for everybody who's spun a lot of laps here. Long sweeping left into another left, over right, and uh, into the finish line here. But we still have more track. We're going into another tabletop into the, the turn after the finish line. This one always gets rutted and gnarly. We got a lot of ruts up the lip of this little tabletop right here. Another little single into a corner. Good rut on the inside here today. And uh, then we go into another small little tabletop. And now we're going into the sand section. Uh, this part gets pretty gnarly. This is where a lot of fans can come and stand and watch. Got some ruts on the lip of the jump. Double that right there, and then we come into the sand corner. A little rut on the inside right here. Watch it so you don't hit the inside uh, dirt. Rut again, and a uh, little jump again, and then we go up and over the tunnel and back onto the start, and that is a full lap Glen Helen Raceway, wide open here today. Well, thanks a lot, Josh Moseman. There is no place quite like Glen Helen. There's our version of the Hollywood sign. The only Hollywood sign you need to know about is right here at Glen Helen. Clearly, you will use every ounce of horsepower available to you, and I'm sure to maximize that, a lot of competitors got a fresh Wiseco in there. This is the Wiseco Two-Stroke Championship presented by Fast House, and I want to thank Kevin Bailey. Thank you so much for Wiseco's sponsorship of this event. What does this mean to you guys to be here for this celebration of two-strokes? Man, we look forward to this event every year. Really what it's about, Wiseco was built on grassroots two-stroke racing. I mean, Wiseco has been manufacturing two-stroke pistons for over 80 years, since 1941. And we still, to this day, build our forged pistons 100% in-house, made in the USA. So this is really where Wiseco was born, where it came from. This is, this is still what we love to do. Everybody inside the Wiseco doors, we all love to go riding and racing. So this is what it's all about for us. Well, what is so cool is, is your products being put to the test and it's passing with flying colors because I don't think there's a better dyno, a better test ground out there for a 125cc Wiseco piston than 22 stories up Mount St. Clown Helen. Yeah, that's, that's the ultimate challenge for a 125 piston, that's for sure. You know, some people, I've seen a fair share come back to the, to the table and uh, say that they roasted one, so... Um, got to have one on hand <laughs> what's it been like out there on the midway i know you've had uh, an opportunity to talk to a lot of the racers out here from literally all over the world we're seeing people not just from california but from all corners of the united states and all over the world what's it been like out there on the midway it's been awesome uh, a lot of foot traffic everybody coming up excited to see us out there um a lot of people will come up and you know see the brand and like man i was using wise Coat pistons back in 1970, 1980. So it's really cool to talk to people that have been around that recognize it and have been doing this for so long. It's, it's truly a lifestyle, and you see that in the people you talk to. Well, I think it's so admirable, too, with your company. As we know, the industry has really gone four-stroke, but to still stay committed to this loyal group of followers that love two-strokes, that love the nostalgia, that love the history, I think that's awesome. And what, what I'm seeing out there is we know there are still some OEMs that are, are staying with the two-stroke. Shout out Yamaha and Beta and, and KTM. But for even some of the older ones like the Kawasaki's and the Suzuki's, guys are still updating these older bikes and keeping them alive. Yeah, that's a huge part of it. I mean, restoring and building two strokes um, all the way back into the 90s has been a, a massive resurgence. So that's a that's a huge part of it. Everybody loves the two strokes. Well, Kevin, thank you again. Wise Co. Pistons, absolutely awesome. And guys, it's the Wise Coast Two Stroke Championship presented by Fast House. Why don't we learn a little bit more about Fast House? Here with Ryan Villapoto and Kenny from Fast House. 
Ryan, we have a really nice YZ250 sitting in front of us. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, man, we've uh, we've really gone through this bike. With, thanks to Yamaha, Fast House, all of our sponsors that have uh, kicked in. I mean, as you guys can see here, this thing is uh, pretty legit. Between the you know the wheels from W, it's got a you know Henson on it, X Trig clamps. Um, you know, good sponsors like PSD, 805, um, like I said, Pro Circuit. Uh, everybody that's involved, I just want to say thank you. That uh, Lightspeed also, uh, you know, for, for everything that we've been able to put on this. And now we're out here at Glen Helen. We're going to ride today a little bit, feel it out, and then tomorrow we're, we're racing this baby, and then we're raffling it off, and we're some lucky winner is going to take this as it sits right here as you guys see it. And now you guys are raffling this off with no purchase necessary. They just go to the Fast House website, sign up, and they can win it. Exactly. Yeah, that was the beauty of this deal is, is uh, it was basically just your email, right? So uh, no real other information, and you can be a lucky winner of taking this bad boy home um, after I'm done ripping it up tomorrow. Now then on the other side of me, we have Kenny Alexander, one of the owners of Fast House. Now Kenny's out at these types of events all the time. Kenny, how's it going? Yeah, we're just super stoked to be out here, and um, I think this is our 15th year doing this thing, and it's just, you know, really cool to wrap our arms around Glen Helen. They're awesome to us, and just, you know, the whole crew here, Bud, Lori, and just everyone that works here at Glen Helen really put their heart and soul into this event, and uh, we just love to help them out and have some fun. So now this bike that's sitting right here in front of us, all they need to do is go to your guys' website and sign up, give an email address, and they can win it, right? Yeah, that's it. That's what's so cool about this. You know, we build um, we build bikes for this event every year, and we were sitting around the office one day just talking shit and saying, you know, we got to get uh, Ryan to come out and race and throw his leg over one of these things. So we gave him a buzz. We told him our idea. He jumped on it. took him about two seconds to say yes, <laughs> and um, it's a thing of beauty. He called Mitch. Mitch dove on it i mean everyone is just really kick some butt to make this thing happen and you know all the sponsors because you know it's not cheap to build one of these bikes full-on race bike it is a badass machine and uh we're stoked to be giving it away all right well there you have it win this motorcycle head over to fasthouse.com enter to win this bad boy and don't forget to support all the sponsors on this motorcycle is what it is all about i am so pumped up my goodness i don't know what i'm more excited for the races coming up the the bike giveaway the fact that in and uh, one of the greatest riders of all time ryan villapoto is here good to see him back on a two-stroke we have got so much to talk about stay with us guys because we've got more coming from the wiseco two-stroke championship hosted by fast house right after this Everyone always thinks it's really easy. Uh, most people don't realize that motocross is rated in the top three of the most demanding sports in the world. The feeling of the motorcycle connecting to the ground, putting the power to the ground, there's no feeling like it. Core motocross people usually like two-stroke sounds. It sounds like a killer B-pack on the starting line with the smoke, the sound, the smell. <laughs> It just sounds intense, and it's just the core of racing. There's no sound like a two-stroke. turn really good and the bike revs out across some bumps or you clean the bike out in the air over a jump and you give it that nice flick of the wrist with a nice clean rev and that's the reason to ride motocross day in day out.
Glenn Helen, feel the speed. The Wiseco two-stroke championship hosted by Fast House here from beautiful San Bernardino, California, rolls on. And we are set. We are set for our first moto of the day. Let's get you down to the gate because it is time for the Pasha 125 shootout. Championship hosted by Fast House. I have goosebumps. I am so excited, Mark Tilly, because we are ready to go once again. Some of the top riders in the world are here, ready to battle. And right now, it's all about that all-important gate pick. It is. It's definitely the gate pick is going to be really important on this race, especially for the 125, 150s that are going. Going into Talladega, being wide open, that gate pick is all important for this first moto format. And... We got a lot of heavy hitters in there. Let's take a look at your boys in factory racing starting, Greg. Do you want to talk about racked and stacked? They have come from all over. Look at the diversity here for the Pasha 125 category. Last year, it was Ryan Morris who was able to score the big win. The question is, who will win it this year? That is the question du jour, and we welcome you in. So glad you are joining us for our live coverage today. Of course, the Pasha 125 category and the big boys, the Open Pro class here in San Bernardino, California. Yeah, no, the, and the Open Pro class is stacked. There is all kinds of fast guys. There, you'll actually see some of these guys twice. You'll see them in this class, and you'll see them in the Open Pro class. The top three guys from last year, Ryan Marias going 2-1. Josh Moseman going 1-3, and Michael Lessie going 3-2. Those three guys are going to battle it out. And then we got some wild cards in there with uh, Sean Lepinovich, our test rider. We'll be throwing it out on a, on a KTM as well. So this is, I, I feel you, I got goosebumps as well. Ooh. I'm ready, baby. Smell it. The only thing I wish we could do is permeate that sweet smell of Premex through your device. We want to thank Boyce and Factory Racing and all the great sponsors. And you know who I want to thank? I want to thank all the wonderful folks here at Glen Helen, Lori, Chad. But look at this facility. Top-notch condition. I was here yesterday for practice. They shut it all down at about 2.30, 3 o'clock and said, we're going to make sure this track is perfect. Look at it, Mark. Typically, it's very dusty here at Glen Helen. This looks like we could... Throw down seeds and plant corn. Yeah, we got overcast skies. They ripped it deep uh, yesterday and today. It's, I mean, I've, I haven't seen Glen Helen this good in a long time. I mean, there's moisture in the air. It's not too hot. It's perfect riding conditions. And we got Boysen on, on board for lots of different features. We got fast laps. In, the Boysen is sponsoring fast laps, and it's going to be about 250 bucks for whoever throws down the fastest lap in the Pasha Open 125, and then the big boy class as well. So look out for that. There's races inside of the races. We cannot wait. We have so many wonderful people to thank throughout this broadcast, and don't worry, we will get there. This is about a nod to heritage. This is about a bygone era. If you are new to this sport, let me briefly explain, in case you're living under a rock, the whole industry went four-stroke. It all started with a man named Doug Henry back in 1997, <laughs> but this is how motocross started. The simplicity, the sound, the smell of a two-stroke engine, and we are still celebrating it here, and there's Nowhere bigger than this celebration right here at Glen Helen Raceway. Well, and right there we can see Giacomo Redondo, which we see on the off-road side a lot on his gas gas. Michael Lessie going to be one of the other big hitters there. Uh, there's, I think that's Ezra Lewis, who's an MXA test rider on one of the Pasha bikes. That's uh, Jeff Ward's son, Ayrton Ward, I believe, right there on the 797. So just off out of the, the picture, we saw Brock Shoemaker on that Bill's Pipes uh, KTM. So... I'm, I'm ready to go. We're ready for this gate drop. Oh, we're getting them set. If you've never seen a start at Glen Helen, get ready. One of the longest starts in motocross. It is an unmitigated drag race into that first Talladega turn, 45-degree banking, and they'll be doing it on these little 125s or <coughs> 150s, excuse me. <laughs> they are allowed. It used to be the cheater bikes, but here in the two-stroke nationals, you are allowed. The 150s. 15 second card is out. It is almost time to go here from iconic and legendary Glen Helen Raceway. Let's drop the gate and get the two stroke nationals underway. Here we go. Whole shot coming up. Who will come out in front? 
It looks like that's Lipinovich who got a huge hole shot. Massive lead for him. I see the defending champion, Ryan Morris, somewhere in there. Spoke with him moments ago. He's on a 2024 KTM 125. Look at this. Multiple lane choices. After Talladega turn, we go 22 stories high up Mount St. Glen Helen, only to come right back down, Mark. There is no place quite like Glen Helen Raceway. Well, and they actually changed the track there. It's the first time I've, I've seen it. That Yesterday, they were coming closer to the, the bottom of the, the hill and kind of doing an off-camber turn up. Up, but yeah, this section you're coming down in there wide open. That 125, 150 is singing. Lipinovich having a little bit of a added advantage with his uh, small stature, being able to uh, gap the field. But we'll have to see who's in second. We got a, a glimpse of it. It looked like he might be on. Oh, that's a KTM. Lipinovich really starting to open things up a different form of racing this is sparking up nostalgia this is bringing back memories these motorcycles they don't have the horsepower of the new ones but boy they are lightweight i well, talked to a few of the riders and i said what's the big difference they said we're over jumping everything no <laughs> engine braking out there mark yeah and it looks like some of the favorites not getting the greatest of starts uh, i saw alessi buried a little bit in the field giacomo redondi in, down in the the stuff so I know that one, I saw one of the Pasha bikes down there. Um, so we're going to wait to see that they're going to be making some some passes and, and moving by some people. So we got some good racing going on. Great battle here for the lead on lap number one. Lipinovich trying to hang on. Competition giving chase. Here's the rest of the field. Mark, a question for you. Oh, don't get dizzy on that one. <laughs> question for you as a rider. That's what it looks like if you crash, by the exactly. way. We've all been there. Uh, Mark, is it? more imperative to get out in front quickly on a 125 can you get stuck back in traffic and maybe not have the horsepower to come up like you would on a 250f um it kind of depends on what what kind of strategy you have for the racing i don't mind i don't mind getting a, a bad start and having to come through the pack because on a 125 you can't really stretch it out like these guys right on top of each other if they were on bigger board motorcycles they would be able to stretch it out a little bit those those mistakes but a uh, on a 125, a costly mistake. One mistake is costly. Like, like just that, like that. Case in point. Is, is, uh, that can let those guys come up from behind and, and catch you quickly. It is such a different form of riding. You'll see these racers out there clutching clutching the motorcycle to bring the RPMs up. You really don't have to do that on a four-stroke. Keeping momentum up is important in all forms of motocross, but on a 125, more important than ever. The cornering speed, the intro speed, the exit speed. And, you know, Glen Helen, with all this elevation, will use every single ounce of horsepower these little machines have. As we take a look, we're starting to get a look at our running order. It looks like a Lessie up the second. Have not got a look at where the defending champion, Ryan Morris, is at. And remember, we'll be running a standard moto format. Two motos here. It'll be a combined scoring system to figure out who is our overall champion. Yeah, well, and it's uh, the defending champ is actually part of the... KTM R&D research and development team and uh, it's rumored that he's out there on one of the bikes that will be coming out and hitting the public here in about three months but he might be on a prototype 150 SX um, <laughs> that the only other bike that was supposed to be out here like that was Mike Brown's bike that we built for Dirt Bike Magazine and we built it with Twisted Development and a lot of, of the other really good manufacturers and we were going to debut one, and then we figured out that maybe they might have one. So it looks like Mosman, Mosman is on one of those Pasha motorcycles. He just came into the frame, so he's worked his way from about mid-pack up to third place. So in short, it helps to know people at Factory KTF. Uh, yeah, it, it definitely, it definitely. And like I said, Twisted Development did all the work on our bike, but man, it's, it's fast. I wish Mike Brown would have been able to make it out here. Oh, we got another great battle. We'll talk more about that in a second, but let's stay with this one. One, two, three, we go. Different line selections as we heat things up here. The Pasha 125 Open at the Wiseco Two-Stroke Championship presented by Fast House. Jack Rapella, Mark Tilly with you all day long. Loving it. Tremendous battle. Mark, you spoke about it moments ago. We expected Mike Brown. Let's, let's recap that this race was supposed to happen over Easter weekend. Unfortunately, it's been a miserable spring in California. The <laughs> weather has been terrible. The track would have been flooded. We would have had to cut sections of the track. Shout out to Chad, Lori, Bud, everybody here at Glen Helen. They decided to reschedule this thing, and as we can 
Muncie, a great decision because conditions are primo. The only bad news is National Supercross going on. That's why Mike Brown and a few others weren't able to make it. Yeah, and really when it comes down to it, some of those guys that aren't here, yeah, we're, we're going to miss them, but uh, we're glad that they did postpone this because it would have ruined the racing. I was here that weekend that it was was raining and was supposed to be, and there was rivers running everywhere. Oh. So it was a great decision to do it. Unfortunately, there is, like you said, some people that uh, that can't come and some people that did lots of traveling from overseas. I mean, a lot of people watched our live feed last year on Dirt Bike Magazine's YouTube and just said, we got to be there for next year. <laughs> so it's kind of kind of cool, but looks like Mo's been about to make a pass. Oh, we got some more great battles. I do I do got to explain to my friends back east, too. As, oh, well, let's stay with this one. Down the hill, looking for the inside. Oh. Go to the outside. He might sweep around the outside of Luke right now. Oh, my goodness. Oh, great there he goes. battles. We're hearing Mosman's got the fast lap. Mosman's got the fast lap. So that's the, the boys in fast lap. Right now, Mosman's got the 250 bucks for Moto One. Good Lord. Big thanks to boys and all of our great sponsors stepping up. Big money. And it all starts with Mr. Pasha. Oh, oh and he goes battle. Here we go. Straight up the hill. Those 150s, those 125s, using every ounce of horsepower possible. As we listen to the sweet sounds of these 125 two strokes, they're competing for fifth. $15,000 of purse money. What can you say about Mr. Pasha stepping up big yeah. out of his pocket? Oh, Mo's oh. off the track. Pinovich got back by him, and so did Luke. Oh, yeah. this, this is the kind of racing we were expecting. This is definitely, and this is the kind of racing that 125s give you because you don't have all that power. The roost, eh, it hurts a little bit, but you can't just move out on somebody. That's why I, I, I'm going to say it right now. I guess I'm old school. OEMs, all of them need to bring back two strokes. I love it. I love the modern four-stroke racing, but I love this as well. Horsepower is so forgiving. That's why every mistake is accentuated here in the 125 category as we've got a great one, two, three battle between three of the best in the business. Yeah, no, this is, this is great. Look, I mean, top three, that's your podium right there. That is amazing that they're that close after three or four laps. I mean, it looks like Luke might try to go around the outside. Lepinovich is doing a lot of looking around. His uh, his gas gas is maybe throwing out that anchor. We might we might see him uh, kind of come back, but Mosman made that mistake, dropped back to third, but he's still right there, and it's a long moto. Fatigue can change a lot of things. The good thing for these riders is you won't get quite as tired on a 125. These are some of the lightest motorcycles out there. As right now, we take a look. It is Lepinovich, Alessi, Ryan Morris up to third. Don't look now. Nice run for him out of the rider out of Murrieta, California. Well, and I think we're, we're missing Luke. Uh, there he his, is. His transponder might not be working, um, but Luke... Uh, Luke is in, so well, we got some, <laughs> some live timing and scoring. Is as off we a always bit, say, those are unofficial <laughs> yeah. results as of now. Unofficial so, results as of and now. And it looks like Mosman has got around Luke back into second place. So now we got some bragging rights here. We got the uh, Dirt Bike Magazine test rider in Sean Lepinovich and then Josh Mosman on that Pasha 150. So uh, we'll see, see what's going to happen here. I thought I had a good job as a commentator. You guys as test riders, <laughs> can you imagine that out there? How, the envy of everybody watching right now. Yeah, I'm a test rider. I go out every single day and turn laps at Glen Helen and test the best dirt bikes in the world. Pretty darn cool, but that's why you got to read Dirt Bike Magazine. Oh, oh look at this oh. battle. Here we go. Banging bars. Lepinovich not giving it. I got to give an homage to the great Art Ekman who we lost recently. Bar to oh. bar. Oh, Wow. I, I, I might have to make some sandwiches for Lepinovich when he comes out and, and test rides rides a little bit more. And Sean actually has uh, the Sean Lepinovich riding school. He's he's out at Glen Helen all the time, helping out kids, helping out vets, doing all kinds of stuff. So Sean, Sean knows how to ride a wide bike, and uh, he's definitely been doing this for a while. And he's not going to give that position up easily. You know, these guys are, are up. They got up early. They had their supplements, their energy oh. drinks, because we're banging bars. We are racing. Back and forth we go. This is what the fans wanted to see, a dogfight to open up the 125 Pasha category. What a show it has been, and we still got a long way to go here, guys. 20-minute moto here from historic Glen Helen Raceway. Yeah, this is going to be definitely going to get interesting. 
these three guys have kind of pulled out a little bit. I think Alessi's back there in, in third place. Um, and then Marias right in front of him. So these guys stepping it up. They, uh, the, the top finishers last year, they, they kind of looked at those guys and said, no, we're, we're taking this. We're going to go for this. So definitely at the halfway mark or almost the halfway mark, these guys are, are, are wanting that win. And Mosman, it's, it looks like he still has the fastest lap so far. So taking home that boys and money in the first moto. Oh, here we go again. The different line selection inside, outside. That's what you got to love when you come to a track like this. And there are so many choices you don't want to follow you got to be creative mark what would you do from this perspective you know what they're wide open right now they're they're kind of riding the clutch we got alessi lurking in, in the background right there being at this point in the moto if those guys got anything this is when it's go time this is when it's time to go and some of those guys up front might be just trying to hold on so you know passing on a track like this uh it's a little wide wide open for a 125 150 but coming down the hill is always my favorite place to pass because you can make up a lot of time. Oh, that's not Alessi. That's Ryan Marias coming in. Wow, Ryan so Morris on the new KTM. The aforementioned bike that Mark talked oh, about. Oh, look at this. Nice. Oh. Ryan yes. was fast in practice. I spoke to him right when he was, he just practiced about I'd say 25 minutes ago. It was a quick turnaround. He said he's been out there with Dante Oliveira and the rest of the KTM boys out there turning laps every single day and that is the 2024 special KTM that you talked about. Yeah, I think he's in some limited edition Alpine Star gear too. Um, he's got it all going but yeah, on. Yeah, no, he's got he's got limited edition and, and custom stuff everywhere. So, yeah, Ryan, it'd be interesting to see what Ryan's lap times are right about now. He's only going to get stronger. He's he spends lots of time on this motorcycle and in the re research and develop department. So, and that it's a really nice thing. The Pierre Mobility Group, also known as uh, Husky Gas Gas and KTM. They put a lot of research and development into two-stroke engines. Boysen is a partner with them for as an OEM supplier, so it's definitely really cool to see. I mean, there's probably 20 KTM employees that are out here racing their own motorcycles right now. So cool. And, and that's why there's just a certain mystique when you come to Southern California. I love racing all over, but this is the home of all the factories. This is where they're all at. It is so special racing here, and especially at this facility. Well, yeah, and Bud and Lori doing this facility on any given day, there is factory riders out here oh. testing and prepping for outdoors, getting some extra riding time. I mean, it's not common to see four or five factory efforts out here doing stuff. Pro Circuit ha is a huge track sponsor, has one of their uh, Supercross tracks here that they're updating all the time. So, yeah, you're right. This is the mecca of the sport. It really is. Thanks to you, I was able to come to the Dirt Bike Day in the Dirt. And just like you said, here's Marvin Muskin turning laps. You never know who you're going to see out here. Brian Deegan's out here sometimes. McGrath's out here. Carmichael, you just never know who you're going to see at Glen Helen. And my mantra is this. Let's keep racing alive because what I'm seeing coast to coast, unfortunately, in all forms of motorsports, we're losing some racetracks. Why? Land value skyrocketing. People are getting out of the business. Not here in Southern California. Thanks to Bud, Lori, Chad, the whole crew at Glen Helen. 300 plus events a yeah year. bud's not gonna let this place go anywhere for a long time so it looks like josh moseman from mxa has checked out on these guys wow uh he he did run the fastest lap time so far he's coming up the hill they're going down the hill so it'll be really interesting to see if ryan could get around sean quickly and make a charge for josh well, Moseman was hungry. He fell just short last year to Ryan Morris. We'll see if he can hold him off. He has really been putting in oh, a lot of pride. Look at this oh. battle over here. These 125 singing the 505, trying to hold him off. Here comes Morris to the outside. That was a nice pass. He set that pass up three turns. He set that pass up coming down the hill. As Morris continues to dig around on that 2024 KTM, talking about fatigue. These, these riders are used to heavier four strokes. How much of an advantage is this on the two stroke in terms of not wearing you out? Really what they'll, what, or what I find uh, for myself, I don't know how these guys are, but what I find for myself is that it takes a little more cardio. It doesn't take as much strength because you're throwing that thing around. It takes a lot more cardio to get through these motos 
than it does because you're that bike's dancing around. No matter if you have a a really good handling 125 or 150, it's still going to bounce around a lot. And you're you're on that rev limiter trying to keep it in the meat of that power band as much as possible. So these guys, I doubt they're going to get tired. Mosman out front, he's riding here all the time. He's riding lots of motorcycles. But when it comes to, to Ryan, Ryan's on the bike all the time. So it, I don't think they're going to get fatigued. Now, second moto, the, the other thing with this is this is one of the first motos right after practice. So not a lot of roughness in the track yet. Second moto is going to be a whole different story. Taking a look now at Mike Alessi, a man who has a long and storied history in this sport. So wonderful to see him back. There was a time when he was one of the top riders in the world and still showing that he's got a whole lot of speed out there on the 800. And I think that is so cool that a lot of former racers, retired racers, circle this as a can't-miss event. And then you got guys like Carson Brown, which, which is interesting, that he certainly has the speed to go out there and compete in any form. He said, you know what we decided to do? We took a step back from Supercross, Pro Motocross, and we're hitting these specialty events. We're going to market our brand very big and involved on social media. It's an interesting way to go in the sport. Well, and, and you have Alessi. Alessi lives in Florida. So his dad still lives out here in California, I believe. But Alessi lives in Florida. He was on, if you watch his social media, he was on Instagram posting Hey, headed to California to, to race some races. And then you have people like uh, Ryan, who's, who's around here. Lepinovich is around in Southern California. But you got people traveling from all over the world to race this race. Michael Lessie looking smooth on the 800. As we listen to the sweet sounds of 125s, we've got about five minutes left to go in moto number one. We thank you so much for joining us here. The Wiseco Two-Stroke Championships hosted by Fast House. This is Pasha Pro Open 125, moto number one. Still so much to get through today. Still so many stories to tell. It is all about the bikes, old bikes, new bikes, Frankensteins. Yeah, we got some Frankensteins we're going to talk about later on. I don't know that we have too many in the 125 category, but uh, oh, there's there's ooh. there's lots of uh, there, there's lots of Frankenstein going on with that. Giacomo Redondi on another gas gas. He's like we see him in the uh, NGP off road series, but he's looks like he might be he might actually still be on a, a carbureted bike. Um, and oddly enough, the carbureted bikes, as of right now are better performing bikes than the fuel injected bikes they just have more power interesting um, so Very it's interesting. definitely a i mean ktm gas gas and husky are still up there in the tops of the 125 and, and 150 classes and just that the fuel injection technology and mapping and stuff like that hasn't caught up with carburation carburation's been around for a really long time and th those carbureted bikes are just faster it, pro it probably will. I mean, we'll see. Technology will catch up. We also got to give a nod to our big friends at uh, Electron as well, too, coming out with that. That carburetor changed the game with the metering rod where it's the jetting is dead on all the time. You remember what you have to you used to have to do to get one of these just perfectly tuned? Was, uh, I know at least me being a shade tree mechanic, clip up, clip down, pilot jet here, main jet here. And then finally, when you get it right, there's nothing like it. Yeah, there's nothing like a good, good running 125, 152 stroke. It just sounds amazing. It looks like we we just got the white flag. The so. white flag is out for Josh Moseman. Can he bring it home, ladies and gentlemen? Bring it home here in moto number one. Still got a long way to go to get what he really wants, and that's the top podium spot here at Glen Helen. But right now he's he, he's got a good uh, good run. He's so far he's got the boys in fastest lap, so he's got some money in his pocket there. I. Th I think that it, this is going to be a really good, not I think, I know this is going to be a really good result for him for the overall. He's got he's got that brand new uh, One Industries gear on that I see and that, that patented 6D, orange 6D MXA helmet and he's riding a Pasha bike. And very so, interesting here when you're talking about the cardio. It seems like the flurry has died down a little bit. The old cliche coming to mind where they say second is as good as a first in Moto 1. Remember, Moto number 2 is weighted more heavily. Could uh, could this possibly be a little strategy out there? Maybe guys winding down a little bit, saving it for that quick turnaround. It could be. I In this one, Mosman just flat out flew. <laughs> he like, is. He walked away from everybody. Nobody had a chance with him. He's... He's flowing right now. He's feeling good. We'll see how he'll, if he'll be able to come back and do it on a rough track as well. Uh, you know that we're not going to see 
uh, Lipinovich give up or Alessi give up or even Ryan Marais. Like, those guys are going to be there till the very end. Around a lap or without incident, a few more turns. Since he is so talented and so awesome, I can tell a funny story about him. Maybe not the world's best mechanic, Josh Moseman. <laughs> He's got a 93 CR250 for sale. I asked him to start it up. He said, man, I haven't started it in three years. So he turned the gas on, and gas just started gushing out of the carburetor. <laughs> so I said, all somebody needs to do is clean that carb, and you'll be ready to go. You just need a little help from Mark Tilly or one of your buddies. Let's get the air gun out, blow it out, and we'll be ready to go. Yeah, well, it looks like he's coming to the finish line, taking home the, the check flag. flag for Josh Mosman. Look at that, riding the wheelie. Congratulations. Feeling good. Pasha and loves it out there. High fives all around. He did his job here in moto number one. He'll go back, wash the bike, get some Gatorade, and get ready for a quick turnaround, Mark. Well, we're, we're actually going to be, hopefully, we will be talking to him right now. Um, so he, he's got, some, uh, he's got some, some explaining to do for us, and it, it looks like we got Mosman, Marias, and Lepinovich as your top three. We'll hear from them. Stay with us. The Wiseco Two-Stroke Championship hosted by Fast House will return right after this. We understand that winning isn't just a goal. It's a way of life. That's why our factory racing hard parts have been the centerpiece of American motocross and off-road racing since 1972. We've spent years perfecting our craft and pushing the limits of what's possible on two wheels. Are you ready to gain the factory advantage? Visit Boyson.com today. The podium is waiting. This live stream is being brought to you by Wiseco Performance Products, the official piston of the two-stroke championship. Welcome back, two-stroke fans, and we have caught up with our winner. What a performance it was for him as we bring you back into the Wiseco two-stroke championship hosted by Fast House. Just got done with the Pasha 125 Open. I'm Jack Rapella from the Cycle Drag YouTube channel. Mark Tilly from Dirt Bike Magazine is here with us. And our winner just rolled off the track. I got to shake your hand, sir. Mr. Josh Mosman, congratulations. You did it. What a wonderful performance. Take me through it out there. Well, it was, uh, it was a wild one. I uh, didn't get a great start, and uh, that made things challenging. Then after that, we... Uh, yeah, mid-pack start. Still, still trying to remember exactly what happened. Mid-pack start. I think I was around seventh or eighth on the first first couple turns. Made some good moves on the first lap. Got into fifth, and then made a couple moves. Got into the third. Rode third for a couple laps, and then I passed into the lead and made some good passes. And then I blew it. I went off the track in the back section here. I don't know how many people got to see it. If you got to see it on TV, we or, did. We did. We, we did. saw. It. We were talking about Woo. how easy. And you can speak to this. I mean, after being on the big four strokes with all that forgiving horsepower, yeah. how, how tough is it to come back on a 125 where every little mistake is just accentuated? Yeah, every mistake is definitely uh, definitely tough. So 
I mean, the 125, I, I'm riding Posh, Posh's 150 KTM, and this thing is, uh, is pretty awesome. I got this uh, VO strip here. What is, what is that? Off my, my forehead. So this is a new thing I'm running to uh, keep sweat out of my eyes. So that's why it's holding my hair down there. But uh, <laughs> it's pretty sweet VO strip. Uh, just started testing them. I get a lot of sweat. You can see how much I'm sweating right now. I get a lot of sweat in my goggles, so been running that lately. But, uh, yeah, passing the lead. Went off the track pretty quickly and then was back in the third. I was like, man, I have to do it all over again. But, uh, man, the bike was awesome. The track is really awesome. And Pasha and Chris Heinrich got a really fast KTM 150 for me to ride. It's really nice for them to let me ride it. And uh, motocross action. We're here testing bikes, writing articles, doing videos, and uh, racing as well. So I love it. Not only did you get the win, you had the boys in fast lap. What do you think it was that separated you from the rest of the competition, particularly Ryan Morris, who we know is your rival, who won this thing last year. You were able to get out there and get that boys in fast lap on him. What do you think the difference was here in Moto1? Oh, I think just, uh, I mean, I'm really comfortable with the track, really comfortable with the bike. We get to ride here a lot. Glen Helen Raceway is the best track in, in the West, really. So uh, for me to get to ride here all the time helps a lot. And Ryan beat me last year in the second moto, so now it's time to see if I can uh, finish off the day strong in that second moto. Well, we know it's a tight turn, so we'll let you go. We'll let you prepare. We wish you the best of luck. Last thing i got to ask you, we know we got this rivalry between the great motocross action, Dirt Bike Magazine. Who wins between you and Mark Tilly? Who uh, wins the test rider shootout? I think there's lots of things that Mark would beat me at, so it just depends on what we're trying. But, uh, <laughs> but Mark's an awesome guy, Dirt Bike Magazine. I'm stoked you guys are doing the live stream today. Uh, my friends and family that aren't here get to watch the race, so that's really cool. And uh, motocross action, we just are... are tagline is we race test our bikes so that's what we're doing today race testing and and uh having fun so looking forward to another moto first one is awesome i've won a lot of first motos so now i gotta try to back it up excellent good luck in moto two that is Thank your you winner Jack. moto number one Appreciate the posho 125 open he is josh moseman trying to win this thing can he do it we will soon find out because moto two is on the horizon stay with us guys the wise coat two stroke championship hosted by fast house we'll be right back I can't wait. And how about, how about that, Mosman? Even giving the nod to Mr. Mark <laughs> Tilly. He, he didn't say I would crush Tilly. He said, no, Tilly's better at a few things than me. That was pretty nice. He's just uh, he's being nice to the old guy. So uh, <laughs> Mosman is definitely a class act. He, he's, as we can tell, he's fast. He's, he's definitely not that far out of being a professional racer. His brother's still racing. So the motocross action is lucky to have him. Certainly, and we're lucky to have these 125 two-strokes. We're lucky to have Mr. Pasha as well. We talked about how generous he is, putting up $15,000. Let's learn a little more about Pasha. We're here with Tony, commonly known as Pasha. Now, he's got, we're sitting here in front of the bike that Josh Mosman from Motocross Action will be racing this weekend in the 125 Open Pro Race. Now, you're known as the 125 guy, Pasha. How did this 125 thing start? Well, I had a buddy of mine who got me into super mini racing. And I bought a 150R big wheel, the Honda. And it kind of just reminded me back in the day when I was on a 125 and how you just got to keep it pinned. Then just by chance, I was really enjoying the super mini racing with the adult mini. Just having fun. I was doing it in, like, uh, street clothes with boots and a helmet, right? Just having fun, like real old-school fun. Yeah. And then Varner shows up at the track about in 2019, and he says, Hey, Pasha, I just finished this 144 uh, Big Boar 125 Yamaha for um, one of the kids. I forgot his name. Connor Eddy. He goes, You mind taking it out for a spin? So I had the small displacement mentality at the moment. So I took the 125 out to the REM track, and I'm like, oh, my God, dude. Like, This is too much fun. I remember this. Because you got to ride a 125 with a different mentality, right? You can't just go on it, right? But because I just came off the Super Mini, like that motor right before, and I got on the 125, I was able to use it. And I'm like, that was a Sunday. Tuesday, I bought a YZ125. I gave it to, uh, I gave it to uh, Varner. He made it a 144 at the same time that he was making a stroked, board-stroked 144 from Alessi. So he built two of them. And then a little bit into the 125 thing, I, I, I realized that we can't compete with the KTMs. So I'm a Yamaha guy, ultimately, but uh, we can't compete with the KTMs. So I sold it, bought uh, my 2020 KTM 125, which was also a Varner motor. And then history just was built on that bike. 
So now we're talking about building motorcycles and you having fun and all that kind of stuff. But you're the person behind all of these one-off 125 invitationals. I got to race one when you did a 40 class one here at at we'll the at Glen Helen, and so tell me a little bit about that. Where did that come from? Okay, so that I'll make a, I'll make a long story short. I used to I used to sponsor riders, so the riders it, it, it's just not worth sponsoring riders because one of the biggest things is that they're not uh, deserving of it. They don't. You and I work harder. They like, they think, you know, they're all self-entitled. They think everybody owes them. They all think they're going to be James Stewart. You know what I mean? So it's like, so I said, you know what? Why am I wasting money on people that don't even, like, love it? You know what I mean? Like, I'm racing harder than they are in in my level. You know what I mean? So I said, all right, well, you know what? Maybe, Maybe I should, maybe we should divert the money that we pay for racing to events, to where instead of one rider taking $20,000 and throwing it in the garbage because he didn't qualify, throw two big races where you have 10 guys getting podium money. Well, now, I know it's not just two races. Just at Glen Helen at the, the Two Stroke World Championship, you're running a 30 pro class and an open pro class. And oh, and a 50. So three races here, and then I know you do multiple races throughout the year. And all of this money is coming out of your pocket directly, yes. right? Originally, ninety. Originally, one hundred percent came out of my pocket, and then uh, now I have a couple of local friends that I've been riding with for twenty, thirty years that are pitching in a few bucks, like Elite Media Technologies and uh, uh, Motocross Ministry out of Sacramento, Ken Kibbe. So you know, they, they they donate what they can. You know, we're not all rich or whatever. So um, we scrape by. It's not you know, it's hard, man. It's really really. So it's all for you. It's all a labor of love. Labor of love, and then and then of course I'd love to get a title sponsor because with your uh, with dirt bike and uh, motocross action, everything the publicity and the things that I get are priceless. So I'm waiting for some entrepreneur uh, guy at like uh, Mrs. Fields Cookies or Kit Kat. I don't want it to be motocross. <laughs> so there you have it. There's the. Just on what Pasha is, this bike is going to be raced by Josh Moseman, like we said. And if you're a big corporate sponsor out there and you want to get some more exposure, check them out. Great interview as we get set for moto number two here at the 15th annual two-stroke world championship what a show we have already seen we still got a lot to get to moto two coming up in the 125 category later on today we still have moto one and moto two in the open pro category stay with us ladies and gentlemen with the two-stroke nationals we'll be back right after this work to ride ride to live At Boyson, we understand that winning isn't just a goal, it's a way of life. That's why our factory racing hard parts have been the centerpiece of American motocross and off-road racing since 1972. We've spent years perfecting our craft and pushing the limits of what's possible on two wheels. Are you ready to gain the factory advantage? Visit Boyson.com today. The podium is waiting.
This live stream is being brought to you by ADS Racing Shocks. Take control. Hi atop San Bernardino, California. We welcome you back to legendary and iconic Glen Helen Raceway. Jack Rapella, Mark Tilly here with you. It is the 15th annual Wiseco Two-Stroke Championship presented by Fast House. Moto number one in the books for Pasha 125. We've got Moto number two on the gate getting ready to go. I cannot wait. What a show. Thank you to the worldwide audience joining us on the Dirt Bike Magazine YouTube channel. Make sure to share this with your friends. Wish all of you could be here, but if you can't, this is the next best thing, isn't it? Live coverage to your device, TV, laptop, wherever you want to watch it. We're live and in living color, Mark. Yeah, you can't ask for better weather. You can't ask for better track conditions. They're doing a little bit of track prep right before our second moto. It's an amazing thing that we're – There's guys are lined up ready on the, on the starting grid. This is a great thing to be able to, to – bring to the average guy there's people watching this on their phone this is this is amazing technology that we get to bring here yeah we take a look right now at the boys and starting grid all the riders lining up in the gate the question is can josh moseman go back to back it was a quick turnaround mark take me inside the mind of a racer because not only is it challenging for him to get that gatorade to get the hydration to stretch to stay loose it's a challenge for the crew they don't have the long delay time in between motos do you think a lot of them maybe even skipped washing the bikes? You know what? I, I think that most of these top guys will have mechanics that are doing stuff. So they probably hosed them off. Those bikes that actually went and they were panning by it all look pretty clean. Uh, for the riders, it's actually a little bit more of an overcast day. The, uh, the sun's popped out a little bit. So their big thing is to keep hydrated because – even when it's got a overcast skies, you're still going through that fluid. So these guys have been doing this for a while. They're, they're not rookies at this. So the quick turnaround might even be better for some of these guys. So, you know, the, like I said, the track conditions are absolutely epic. Throwing some water on the track, getting everything going. Like I said, the sun has just came out in maybe the last half hour, 45 minutes. So it's got a nice breeze. These guys know what they're doing. They know how to get ready for this race, and I can't wait to see. It looks like Mosman. It's going to be a, a Mosman, Marias, or uh, test rider Sean Lepinovich got on the podium in the first moto, but Mosman kind of checked out in the first moto. It was smooth track, one of the first races of the day, um, but we'll see. It's it's going to be epic racing the track's going to be a lot rougher than last time they saw it. That's for sure. And don't count out the 800. Michael Lessi out there in the Yamaha. He's another one that could step up. Anything can happen. We've seen it time and time again. Big shout out to Glenn Helen for just prepping this facility to perfection. It's amazing all the equipment they have here as well. It's like we're set up for a pro national. This definitely one of the biggest races I'm talking in the world. I had the pleasure to uh, cover the Daytona Supercross. Ask the GOAT, Ricky Carmichael, about the two-stroke nationals. He knew exactly what I was talking about and said, maybe someday well, he and, will return. And to it's run amazing it. the amount of events and the variety of events that been or that that are held at Glen Helen. Bud and Lori are doing events every single weekend. This event was postponed. A month later, they're able to run this event on a day right before tomorrow. SRA is racing Grand Prix here yes, uh, tomorrow that will have, you know, a seven-mile course and be stretched out over the whole facility. They're doing a Clayton Roberts uh, benefit, who Clayton was just, just uh, injured in an off-road race. But so Road to Recovery will be here tomorrow with, with the Clayton thing. And, but the variety of events is mind-blowing. They have 10- and 24-hour endurance races held here. So I've been able to do them all. So it, it's kind of... There's always something going on at Glen Helen, whether it's a tough mud race or, or uh, uh, you know, a dry Grand Prix race. Getting ready to fire up the bikes. Yeah, off in the distance, we even have a short course track. We've got something really special for you, by the way, guys. This is what it's all about. The sounds of two strokes. We're firing them up. Why don't we just lay out for a second and let you crank it up and enjoy the sweet sounds of two strokes. Remember, this is the race that was actually the very first one of the day. 
And that, my friend, is what it's all about, Mr. Mark Tilly. Uh, something that you don't see with the four strokes anymore. They don't have to clean them out like that. We've already got, looks like the, the official is in place. 30-second card officially up in the air. The 15-second card. Hurry up, young lady. We're about ready to send Moto number two off one of the longest starts in racing into the Talladega turn. Here we go, guys. Whole shot, gate drop from San Bernardino, California. It is Moto number two of the Pasha 125. Shootout, $15,000 up for grabs, and it all begins right here. The gate is down. Here we go, racing into the first corner, swirly, wide open throttle. Somebody way out in front into Talladega turn. Who is it? Look that, at the traffic behind him. That looks like Sean Lepinovich again. Uh, t Dirt Bike Magazine test rider. Shout out to, to Sean. But looks like Sean's right there. R Ryan Marias is right there. Alessi might be there. I saw uh, Moseman get pinched off uh, in the very beginning. So he's going to be coming behind just like he did. He looks like he's about 7th or 8th right now. So mid-pack just like he got in the first moto. Um and again, Lepinovich out front. Let's see if this time he can maybe set sail and uh, take this thing all the way to checkered flag. They get to carve in the first lines on this freshly prepped racetrack. Sometimes that can be a bit precarious. It may be a little slippery in spots that you're not expecting as they're using every single inch of California real estate out here to get as much speed, as much momentum as they possibly can on these 125 and as Mark pointed out, Moto One, some, in some cases, 150 cc machines. Well, and we're seeing a couple of off-road riders right there with uh, Tristan Alvarez and Giacomo Redondi battling it out coming down the hill and uh, now going back in the canyon uh that right there ryan marais and uh, michael lessie on top closer to the front of the pack this time moseman looks like he's making some moves early oh oh and off oh. the track again in the same spot he went off the track in the first moto uh, maybe that's his good luck charm we'll see that was when he really turned it up in moto number one as we give you a look here at the great aerial coverage brought to you by boys in factory racing big shout out to eric and everybody back there in pennsylvania boys and you are the greatest and all of our wonderful sponsors making this happen today battles all around this racetrack uh what a flurry of activity oh man oh. wow and those are the off oh no that was that's tristan alvarez right there uh, one of the off-road riders that we get, get to see a lot. That's Luke that was uh, battling up front in the first moto. I believe that's Brock Shoemaker on that Bill's Pipe uh, KTM 150 as well. So, man, this is this is definitely shaping up. Maybe uh, Lepinovich get out front and set sail. Yeah, remember the way it works here in motocross. The second moto is weighted heavily, so Mosman knows that he needs to get up there and win this thing. He needs to go 1-1 one, one on the day. If he wants to assure and guarantee victory, he's got a long way to go. It's a 20-minute moto here in San Bernardino, California. It will test these riders' fitness levels. It will test their cardio. It will test their clutch hands. Yeah, it, and knowing Ryan Marais up there, he's in second place. He knows he's doing math already. Like, I've seen, I've seen Ryan come last lap. Win, win a race and win the overall in the last 10 feet of the, the moto. We saw it here, I think, at the, at the vet race. Um, so he, his race craft, he knows what he's doing. So he can kind of put himself in a good position. Mosman definitely going to have to come from behind. Looks like Lepinovich stretching it out a little bit going up Mount St. Helens and uh, coming back down. It looks like they did some, some grooming on, on the hills, going up and down the hills, which – can get gnarly at times. Yes, yes, indeed. But let us know, YouTube land, in the comments, how great is this? The sweet sound of two strokes filling the air. I'm telling you, we got to do it for you one more time here with the 125s. Uh, we got our expert audio engineer, Kelly, at the helm. Kelly, could we get a little crank it up? Thank you very much, Kelly, part of Ross Fitz Productions, bringing you this action here like an angry swarm of bees. If you follow any of the stuff that I do on Cycle Drag YouTube, you know I love two strokes. I don't care if it's street bikes. I don't care if it's dirt bikes. Mark, out there, this is such a celebration, a festival. There's an old Yamaha RD 350 out there, street bike, classic bike, in the sand, in the dirt here at Glen Helen. You know, I just love this, this cult-like following. 
that people have this love of the smell of the sounds of a two-stroke. There's nothing quite like it. Yeah, I'm definitely partial to that sound we just heard. Uh, if, if I could wake up in the morning with that being my alarm clock all the time, it, <laughs> it wouldn't disappoint. If you could get the smell of race gas and, and two-stroke premix in there, it, there's no better sound than that. When If you're waking up to that every morning, you got to be smiling. And let's take you back. Let's pretend this is the year 1996. These were the most powerful, baddest, small bore bikes in the world. Back then, a four-stroke was like an XR Woods bike, right? We didn't know Doug Henry was going to change the world in 1997. And then enter 2003, 2004, where the OEMs really started committing to four-strokes. And what I find funny is I remember back in that era, you could buy a two-stroke for like a 1000 bucks because they plummeted in value. Everybody could see the writing on the wall. Four strokes were the way to go. Now the collectability of these machines, seeing bikes from the 90s, parts bikes, going for four or five grand. I know you and all the great work you do at Dirt Bike Magazine, you can speak to that. I think you guys paid a pretty penny for that RM you restored, didn't you? Oh, yeah, no, it's it's amazing the the jump in prices in bikes that, you know, five years ago we would have looked at and been like, yeah, I don't really want to get anything with that, but... I mean, it is amazing now that the aftermarket manufacturers have so many parts available for these motorcycles. It's mind-blowing. There's more parts available for them now than when they were brand new. And you get to come out to races like this, and you get to see that stuff, and more stuff is coming. It's, it's great. It's job security for us because we get to cover <laughs> all kinds of stuff, but it's an amazing thing to, to have happen because the, the industry is thriving because of it. We do need more bikes that are more affordable for the average guy. Like, and whether it's electric, whether it's two-stroke, whether it's four-strokes, it doesn't matter. We need to get more people in the seat. A, amen to that. And affordability is one of the key reasons why I love two-strokes as well. I mean, back in the day, 125, about three grand, 3,500, something like that. Now we're talking bikes closer to 10 grand. We know everything has gone up in value. But, uh, boy, when you don't have cams, when you don't have intake valves, exhaust valves, and all that other stuff to worry about, you save a few bucks, don't you? Well, yeah, you definitely do. Well, it looks like we're seeing the, the battle tightening up. Mosman coming through the pack. He's right on the back wheel of, it looks like, a Lessie now. And then Ryan has come up on Sean up there in, in, in the first position. So we got first, first through fourth, you can throw a blanket over them. I mean, they're, they're right almost in the same turn. One mistake, and the complexion of this race can change. Sean Lepinovich on the 505, leading everybody around. Mike Alessi, the legend. He's done so much in this sport. I told you beforehand, keep an eye on that 800. He could find his groove here in moto number two. He's got about 15 minutes left to go. We'll see what happens here. We talked about this in Moto 1. One mistake on these bikes is just so costly. You don't have that horsepower as your friend to make up for any type of bottle. Yeah, and it, the other thing, just looking at it, we have two KTMs and two gas gases in the top four. So if that doesn't show you a little bit of uh, dedication to two-stroke development and everything, the Pierre Mobility Group has got it, got it going on. Like It's definitely something to where we need companies like that. I mean, I think Yamaha is another major mm -hmm. manufacturer, but all the European brands are excelling with two-stroke and with two-stroke development so we're we're definitely appreciative of that because we get to see great racing action like this and it looks like ryan might be making the move on sean he's now he's all over him yes what a great battle here for your lead lapinovich trying to hang on to it testing these 125s pushing them to their utter limits with all this extreme elevation at mount saint Glen helen certainly one of the most famous tracks in the world. One of the most important tracks when it comes to moto history. And we are watching a battle right here. So glad you're along with us, guys. It is the 15th annual Wiseco Two-Stroke Championship presented by Fast House. Jack Rapella, Mark Tilly with you. We can't wait for the Open Pro category coming up. Moto 1 and Moto 2. Stay with us for that. Put your feet up. Grab a favorite cold beverage and enjoy what is a great day racing here from Glen Helen? Well, and it looks like where Lepinovich is making up time is on the hills. Um, he's, he rides here a lot. Uh, some of that going up the hills might be a little bit of the, uh, he's a, a little bit smaller in stature, but uh, that might be helping him out, adding some horsepower to that gas gas that he's on. Um, but Ryan's definitely not going to give up. He's, he's got uh, a lot of research and development behind that motorcycle that he's on. 
um, and there is rumored that it is one of the new bikes that is coming. So that's the cool part about having another one of these races is that you can see new stuff before we get to actually see it on the showroom floor. And those two have kind of pulled out a little bit on the, the battle for second um, with this great drone footage brought to you by Boysen. No doubt about that. Ryan Morris on the 116 trying to close in with that special KTM. As I mentioned before, he's been training with Dante Oliveira and a bunch of the other KTM boys. Dante, by the way, who's, who just won a GNCC and is also dominating NGPC out here. One of the best. Wish he was racing. But I know all the KTM boys in Temecula, not far down the road, that new multi oh, no, you don't. Mosman. Look at this Mosman on the charge. He says, I'll move to the front of this pack as well. He knows time is of the essence. Well, and if you look at, just to throw it out there, and again, this is this is not official, but just to throw it out there, Mosman moved into the third. He won the first moto. A, a one and a three gives him four. Marias finished second. That's two, two, that's four. And then... Lepinovich finished third. If he wins, that's four. Oof. So a three-way tie, as of right now, a three-way tie for the overall. I believe it would be Lepinovich that gets it if it stays the way that it is right now. But we still got a lot more racing going on. We're probably about halfway through right now. Um, but still more to come. There's all kinds of stuff can happen. Yeah, if you're a competitor in this situation, you know, the easiest math is win this race. <laughs> Go out and win this race, especially second moto, as we get some great aerial coverage. Again, courtesy of Boys and Factory Racing here. The drone follows up the hill. We are officially halfway gone. We are 10 minutes gone in this 20-minute moto. These riders giving it everything they got. At this point, they're fatigued. Arm pump setting in. Perhaps cramped. Starting to get to the point, too, I remember the great Travis Pastrano would always talk about it. He doesn't, re a lot of people don't realize when you get tired, it's hard to see straight. Yeah. Especially well, with the vibration of some of these things. When you get tired, there's all kinds of stuff that happens. Your muscles stop working. You can't see. You get dizzy. There's all, okay, you, you start thinking about that sandwich that you should have <laughs> ate. So there's all kinds of stuff that, that goes on. So Or the one that you ate that you shouldn't have. It works <laughs> exactly, both ways, does it? Exactly. Everybody's got their rituals. We seat bounce and scrub over some of these elevation and Different cavities here at Glen Helen Raceway. What is so cool, too, is they have changed this track. If anybody has an advantage, that's kind of wiped clean somewhat because there's always a new section when you come back to Glen Helen. Big shout-out, Chad, and the entire track team here. They really keep riders guessing. Yep. Where we look at it right now with the riders, the person kind of in the catbird seat right now is Ryan Marais. He's in second. If he gets into first, I think that Mosman would have to – then again win the moto so ryan is kind of in charge of his own destiny right here he, he can uh if if he can make that pass there's nobody that can beat him right now there's the josh moseman machine he is digging in trying to win this thing he was so close he thought about it all last year as a test rider you know he wants those ultimate bragging rights he wants to say he won the pasha 125 shootout did his job in moto number one he's got work to do here in moto number two but he can see the field in front of him mosman's got about 10 minutes to make it happen and mosman on one of those pasha uh ktm 150s so again pasha paying the big money for this moto and has the motorcycle that, that could actually win the overall as well. So, you know, we need more people like like Tony. It's it's <laughs> definitely somebody putting up that money and... and oh, 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 oh that was it. the mistake we talked about. Oh, not quick to refire it either. What's going on? Is it a bike problem? Oh, no. Disaster for Mosman. Absolute disaster. What is, did, he, did he seize it? What's going on, Mark? I'm surprised he didn't immediately start to refire the motorcycle. There must be something more severe wrong with this bike. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, let's hope that 150 didn't seize up. Is the rear wheel locked up? What happened out there? That looks like that looks like a, that would be the end of, of his day. Oh, good Lord. The day ends in disappointment for mr mosman we've told you this is a, a very thankless what have you done lately for me sport he was the hero in moto number one and now in line potentially for a dnf in moto number two that's how unforgiving this sport is wow well now that's sean lepinovich out front now sean that has, changes everything he has to win 
He, he finished, I believe, third in, in Moto 1. So he is tied with, with Ryan as of right now. Um, so if Ryan gets around him, Ryan's got the overall for sure. Um, but second moto in, in motocross, second moto means more. If he goes 3-1, that beats a 2-2. Now, of course, what you've said is true, but let's preface this by saying that's if we don't see any more carnage or breakage exactly. and everybody stays where they are. Uh, case in point out there with, with Mosman, you just never know when you're going to encounter a failure, especially with one of these older bikes, one of these custom bikes. I always wonder, too, we talk about the Frankensteins and what Carson Brown's doing out here with the KTM 300 and the RM uh, chassis. Sometimes I don't think people realize how much testing and that the factories do to make sure these bikes stand up. A custom bike, you never know You never know what's going to happen. I liken it even to the guys that build custom choppers until you get it out there and put 1,000 miles on it. You don't know what it's going to do. Well, and Carson's used to riding those custom motorcycles. His dad owns BBR. That's all they do is make custom stuff. So he's, he's definitely used to riding that. But, yeah, you're right. That, that anything can happen right down to that last corner, that last that last jump right there that we just see Alessi going over. Anything can happen, especially in the two-stroke world. Right. We, now it, it's no longer a thing with bikes being so well built now. We don't see a lot of catastrophic failures. But, oh, it looks like Ryan Marais oh, making a bid. Ryan Morris trying to go back to back. Ladies and gentlemen, can he do it? He Will won this around the outside. 2 1 last year for the overall. Can he make it stick? Sean Lepinovich is not giving up, though. He comes back. He takes the inside line. Inside, outside, we've got a battle. Fans absolutely loving it here at Glen Helen. If you're loving this live coverage, wherever you may be, let us know down below in the comments. Up the hill we go, 22 stories high, atop Mount St. Glen Helen. These 125s, these 150s, giving it everything they got. Well, and this is the, the part of the course that Sean in the past has made up some time going up the hill. Um, maybe his bike might be a little bit faster. Might be his the, the, how big he is and, and uh, compared to Ryan. Oh, down oh, the inside. Back and see forth. what happens. So you see that he kind of pulls him a little bit. So now coming down the hill. Uh, if he'll keep that, that momentum coming down. But it seems like in that area of the track, he is a little bit faster. He wa he's willing to hang it out a little bit more. Or his bike might just be a little bit faster. To the inside we go. Watch the 116 bar to bar. Up the hill. Great racing here in moto number two. You think these guys are hungry. You think these guys want it. You think Ryan Morris wants to go back to back at one of the most prestigious races of the year. But Sean Lepinovich will not give up on the 505. And Sean spends a lot of time here at Glen Helen, like we mentioned in, in Moto One. He has a riding school, the Sean Lepinovich Riding School, and so he's out here with, you know, classes multiple times a week. He's coaching kids. He's actually done a little bit of riding with my, with my two sons, and it's it's a great great thing for the kids. But he spends a lot of time here at Glen Helen, so he knows the ins and outs. But so does Ryan. Ryan's here, testing and developing the new KTM Gas Gas and Husky. Probably during during that testing season, every every time Glen Helen's open. Into the split section. Both riders go inside. Keep an eye on the line choice. Who will get creative here? We've noticed a few differences. Oh, white flag out. The white flag is out. One left to go. Ladies and gentlemen, will it be Ryan Morris? Will it be Sean Lepinovich, the coach? As Mark Tilly just mentioned, I can think of no better example, no better lesson to his students than to put on the tape, put on YouTube, and say, watch this, kids. But he knows it's all about who's on top of the podium. He's got one more lap to make oh! it happen. We got a battle. And bar we were, to bar. We were just talking about Ryan and his racecraft and making that last lap pass, last turn pass. Are we going to see one? Will there be? Will he be able to stick it underneath, go around? What is going to happen? This is awesome. Ryan Morris to the outside, through the long section, into the 45-degree banking, the 180 right-hander turn of Talladega, known as one of the toughest obstacles here at Glen Helen Raceway. We are side-by-side side as Morris continues to dig. Lepinovich continues to lead. We've got about half a lap ago to decide the Pasha 125 shootout here at the Wiseco two-stroke championship. Well, and in the, this particular section of the track, this is where Sean has been able to pull out on Ryan. So 
Will it? Will he be able to pull out just a little bit more and, and be able to hold it all the way to the end without making a mistake? We're going to see great coverage. Yes, indeed. I've noticed different line choice down here. Let's see what happens at the bottom of the hill. I noticed somebody going inside, somebody going outside. We'll see if they try something different to the inside. Both go inside on this one. As the 116, Ryan Morris may be forced to follow a little bit. We'll see if he gets creative. Does he have anything left in his bag of tricks here as Lepinovich continues to pull away? Yeah, this is amazing racing. After 20 minutes and they're second, not even a second apart, like this is pretty cool. I can't wait to see what the fast lap is going to be for this particular race. We will see. The boys in fast lap, very prestigious, but nothing more prestigious than standing atop the podium. And right now, Sean Lepinovich in line to do just that. A few more turns left to go. Does Ryan Morris have anything left, or will Sean Lepinovich continue what has been an absolute picture-perfect day into the finish line area he quickly approaches as he navigates his way through? We'll see if he goes inside again on the split lane uh, this is another one of the options where you get the split lane to the inside as our leader has the fast lap. No big surprise there. Sean Lepinovich, the 505, looking to bring it home. He is your winner. The yeah. Pasha 125 shootout. The 505 takes the win. Wow. I, I might have to be a little bit nicer to Sean during testing now. Uh, this is this is pretty great. This is this is an amazing thing. Like. He, he made that gas gas scream. He certainly And it looks like did. coming across the line, we have Jeff Alessi coming across the line since, uh, in a, unfortunately, it looks like Josh Mosman might have been, might DNF this moto. Oh, tough break. Your heart breaks for Mosman. As we give you a look at our unofficial Boys and Factory Racing results, fast lap, you're a winner. Sean Lepinovich on the Gas Gas. Ryan Morris, last year's winner, apparently dethroned on the KTM. Mike Alessi, great performance by him, coming home third. G Giacomo Redondi, all the way from Italy, number four. Luke out there, number five. Tristan Alvarez rounding out your top six. Ezra Lewis, Nathan Hamlin, Patrick Evans, and Josh Oseman, Moseman, unfortunately, uh, still salvages the top 10. We'll sort it all out when we come back. Don't go anywhere, guys. The 15th annual two-stroke world championship will be back right after this. Work to ride, ride to live. At Boyson, we understand that winning isn't just a goal. It's a way of life. That's why our factory racing hard parts have been the centerpiece of American motocross and off-road racing since 1972. We've spent years perfecting our craft and pushing the limits of what's possible on two wheels. Are you ready to gain the factory advantage? Visit Boyson.com today. The podium is waiting.
This live stream is being brought to you by Poison Factory Racing Parts, where factory racing means performance. The dust is still settling from what was an absolute thriller. I'm talking horsepower theater, the Pasha 125 shootout. As we welcome you back to the 15th annual Wiseco two-stroke championship presented by Fast House, I am now here with the man of the hour, the man of the power out of Guam by way of Riverside, California. He is your winner, Sean Lapanovich. Congratulations, my friend. Wow, unbelievable performance out there. Tell me how you were able to gain so much speed here in moto number two. Moto one was just super early, 8:30 in the morning, and uh, but the call just wasn't a little bit warmed up. But now I, I raced uh, two motos already, and I'm feeling pretty good now. And and that battle to to end this thing back and forth, back and forth. What was going through your mind? I noticed there was a little bit of uh, difference in line selection there. What was that process like? The inside outside battle. Honestly, I didn't look back at all. I didn't know who was behind me. And then I saw the two lap board to go, and I'm like, I can't throw this away. And then uh, Ryan stuck it in one time, and I'm like, okay, got to go now. You know, it's a lap to go, and uh, I just didn't give up. How are you so fast on a 125? Do you do a lot of practice on a small board two-stroke? <sighs> Honestly, I rode the bike Thursday. Uh, WP hooked me up with some suspension. Thursday for the first time? For the first time. Oh, good Lord. You hear that YouTube and, uh, land? And uh, Will Harper, he, built a, he was building this bike for like a week, and he asked me if I wanted to race it. And I'm like, yeah, like, if everything works out, I'll, I'll ride it. And the plan was to do the open pro, open pro class. That bike was all ready, but the motos were back to back, and I didn't have time, so uh, just stuck with the, the little bike. Well, your hard work certainly paid off. We can tell you got a good sweat going over there as well. We were talking with Mark Tilly during the broadcast that you know maybe the 125s don't require quite as much strength as wrestling a four stroke, but the cardio it requires maybe even more so. How would you assess? The fitness level it takes to go out there and do what you just did. I just was pushing, and I just didn't give up. Uh, I just told myself, just keep going. Like, and uh, I pulled the win, so that was good. Very cool. And I understand you have some special people here. Your family here with yeah, you? Yeah, my mom and dad. Uh, they're All the from, way from Guam? They're from Guam. Oh, and, uh, shout out. What's the riding scene like in Guam? So Guam is a 30-mile island, just like Hawaii, but smaller than Hawaii. And I grew up there until I was uh, 14, and then we moved to the United States here. And uh been living here since I was 15 years old. Very cool. Very impressive, sir. That is it. How's it feel to be a whole lot richer taking <laughs> home a piece of that $15,000 yep. purse from Pasha? Yeah, feels good. Uh, I want to thank uh, Dirt Bike Magazine, FXR, 60, CTI, Will Harper, WP, Damon from WP, <coughs> Alpine Star, and my mom, my dad for coming all the way here, and uh, ODI, Backyard Designs, and yeah, still got another one out there. John Lapanovich, congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. How about it? He was your winner in the Pasha 125 category. Stay with us because the big boys are coming up next. Open Pro, the two-stroke world championship from Glen Helen Raceway rolls on right after this. Work to ride, ride to live. At Boyson, we understand that winning isn't just a goal. It's a way of life. That's why our factory racing hard parts have been the centerpiece of American motocross and off-road racing since 1972. We've spent years perfecting our craft and pushing the limits of what's possible on two wheels. Are you ready to gain the factory advantage? Visit Boyson.com today. The podium is waiting.
Great live crowd here in San Bernardino, California, Glen Helen Raceway. And from what I understand, we have a massive audience watching us live online. Thank you guys so much. It is the 15th annual two-stroke world championship. Jack Corpella here from the Cycle Drag YouTube channel alongside Mark Tilly from Dirt Bike Magazine. That is the YouTube channel we are on today. Thank you so much, Dirt Bike Magazine, for all that you do for this great, great sport. And we thank Boyson as well and all the wonderful sponsors who make this happen. Mark Tilly had an opportunity to tell us a little bit more about Boyson. Let's check it out. When you think about two strokes, you can't not think about Boyson. Right here in front of me, we have a KTM 300 built by Motocross Action Magazine, going to be ridden this weekend by test rider Josh Fout. And on it, we have their brand new factory racing CNC machined aluminum billet clutch cover. Now, Boyson... That's not the only thing they make for two-strokes. They make a wide variety of stuff for two-strokes. Rad valves, they make reeds, they make uh, ignition covers, clutch covers. I actually got to go to the Boysen facility in Pennsylvania where they have a foundry where they make and melt down the aluminum, pour it into molds, and make all of the aluminum products that they have available for two-strokes. Ivan Boysen, the founder of Boysen, was a huge person in the development of Case Reed induction two-stroke motors. They still work with many major manufacturers today as OEM suppliers for reeds and induction systems. So, like we said, when you think about two-strokes, you can't not think about Boysen. Go check them out. Boyson, just such a huge name in the two-stroke world. They do such a great job. Mark, I know you have been to the, the foundry, and that is awesome. I'm proud to say I have a lot of parts on my KX250. I have something called the Impeller, which keeps it cooler. They call it the Boyson Super Cooler. Exactly. Uh, I have uh, a Boyson Reed Valve in the thing. It's just amazing. The cases, I think you got one of them right there. Yeah, the side this, cases. this is what we were talking about. This is uh, their, one of their brand-new products, uh, but it's machine billet aluminum. Um, but like I was saying, in that, we got to go to the foundry. They have an actual foundry at their facility. It's amazing what they can do. Like, it's, they make those super cooler, you know, stuff that you were talking about. That, and it's all done in-house. Like, it, it's absolutely amazing. And the progression of Boysen as a company, Dog was one of the guys that, race professionally and did all that kind of stuff on the national circuit so it's definitely one of those things to where we're happy that boysen is around and eric from boysen and dog from boysen supporting the industry immensely yeah i know eric has just taken that company to a whole another level and i can even tell you even on the vintage side the drag bike side boysen it's not just dirt bikes <laughs> anything two stroke related they've got covered as we take a look at our podium finishers that's what it's all about sean lapanovich all the way from guam taking the win my goodness i'll tell you if this was any precursor for what we're in for here in the open pro category i hope there's a seat belt on my chair because i don't know <laughs> i don't know if i can take it and one of the big stories will be carson brown on what we're affectionately calling a frankenstein are you guys ready for this an rmz chassis a ktm motor and mark tilly had an opportunity to learn more about it let's find out about carson brown's unique one of one bike so I'm here standing next to Carson Brown, the defending two-stroke world champion. Now, I know Carson because he's a dirt bike magazine test rider, and I know that he just loves to ride motorcycles. Now, Carson, last year you won it on a Twisted Development YZ300. It looks like you're back on something yellow, and I know that Suzuki doesn't make a two-stroke. Yeah, so uh, Jamie from Twisted Development, he's like, hey, man, I've got this RMZ, and I put a KTM... 300 sx engine in it he's like i know you like aluminum frames i know you like the ktm engine the carbureted one i have the bike for you and you know we uh we did a bunch of testing on it and right off i was like you know this thing's pretty sick and uh, yeah a little bit of fine tuning later and honestly we haven't changed that much like it's been pretty good uh right out of the box from what he did and uh i'm pretty stoked with it and Hopefully we can get some hole shots on it tomorrow and get the job done again, but there's always gnarly dudes here, so it's, uh, it's always crazy. Well, and I know that there's been a lot of 
choices that you've had to make. There was another bike that you were riding around. You you actually tested four or five different motorcycles. I mean, you know, we have a 300 KTM that you tested. And so to say that this bike is good, it's kind of what you're used to. Your dad owns BBR. He builds a lot of one-off motorcycles. And this bike, I mean, I've seen you do pretty amazing things on Frankenstein-type motorcycles. And this would kind of be that. Yeah, I mean, this kind of fits right into my element of what I do. Like you said, Frankenstein bikes and just weird conversions and pretty much anything out of the ordinary, I'm all for. So this fits right onto the bucket list of things that, uh, yeah, I need to do for this race pretty much. I'm stoked with it. Well, and a bunch of one-off parts that you get to go out and test. And nine times out of ten, a one-off part, Carson Brown is going to smash it. Yeah, I mean, there, there's always that. I mean, there's always the chance of breaking something or tweaking something, and there's a bunch of one-off parts to, to make a build like this happen. But, you know, luckily, this thing seems pretty solid. We've put a bunch of time on it, and um, I'm excited to see how it performs tomorrow. But so far, we're happy. Well, there you have it. Carson is going to go up against a lot of fast guys tomorrow. Is this the beginning of maybe Suzuki making two strokes again? You never know. Check it out. I'd love to see Suzuki make two strokes again as we take a look at the iconic Glen Helen Hollywood sign. That's the only Hollywood sign that really matters out here. And what what matters coming up next is can Carson Brown go back to back? He won this event last year, this year on a much different, unique motorcycle, as you just highlighted, Mark. Kind of like we talked about, though, are there any kinks in that bike? Is there anything they need to work out? Is there going to be any type of learning curve? Or is it just going to be another BBR Twisted Development on Kill Monster? Well, you know what? Jamie at Twisted Development builds some amazing motorcycles. He's got a great crew behind him, and it's definitely a thing to where if it was going to break, it might have broken the first, first moto. But, hey, we saw Mosman's bike give out in the second moto I don't think we're going to run into that issue. Jamie and his crew has that bike singing for Carson. Dwayne Brown working on that motorcycle as well. And uh, it's definitely Hi, a cool we're thing back. to see. Yeah, and if, if you haven't picked up on this already, Mark and I love two strokes. We are <laughs> campaigning for all OEMs to bring them back. But we also want to give a nod to the two, the two stroke manufacturers that are still getting it done. One of them. Pierre Mobility, and uh, hey, shout out to everybody watching us, a lot of my District 5 friends, even my father just watching, he wanted to know more about Gas Gas, and luckily, Mark, you were able to get this entire feature about the KTM, Husqvarna, Gas Gas family, Pierre Mobility, let's take you to that, guys, and check it out. Hi, we're back here live at the Two Stroke World Championships. I'm standing in front of the official setup of KTM or the Pierre Mobility Group, also known as KTM, Gas Gas, and Husky. We have three bikes in front of us that are going to be raced this weekend by actual employees at KTM, Gas Gas, and Husky that are bringing out their own motorcycles. Over here we have a Gas Gas, one of their older carbureted models. Um, then we have a 125 on the other side. That is one of their brand new fuel injected models. And then the one in the center that we have is decked out with Marvin Moosecan graphics. He won't be here, but it is one of the other fuel injected models. So KTM is one of the only manufacturers that is putting lots of money into the two stroke development. We will have Ryan Marias out here later on racing the 125 class, who is one of the heads in the R&D department. So we see that they're putting a lot of effort into this, and we don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. There is a lot of KTMs out here this weekend, so we'll see how they do. Mark has been working hard for us out there in the pits, and that's what you got to love, the absolute diversity. New bikes, old bikes, custom bikes, and it's all about that smell. It's all about that sound. It's all about mixing gas and hauling. Well, you know the rest. It's the 15th <laughs> annual two-stroke world championship here from Glen Helen Raceway, and it will roll on right with us. Stay with us, guys. Open Pro coming up next. Work to ride, ride to live. At Boyson, we understand that winning isn't just a goal. 
it's a way of life. That's why our factory racing hard parts have been the centerpiece of American motocross and off-road racing since 1972. We've spent years perfecting our craft and pushing the limits of what's possible on two wheels. Are you ready to gain the factory advantage? Visit Boyson.com today. The podium is waiting. This live stream is being brought to you by Wiseco Performance Products, the official piston of the Two Stroke Championship. The sweet smell of premix has filled the air here in San Bernardino, California, as you look. High atop iconic and legendary Glen Helen Raceway. It is the 15th annual Wiseco Two Stroke World Championship brought to you by Fast House. Jack Rapella, Mark Tilly here with you, and we are getting set. We are inching ever closer to our first moto in the open pro category. I cannot wait. So many storylines, so much to talk about. Can Carson Brown go back to back on that Frankenstein? Set for moto number one of the Wiseco Two Stroke Championship presented by Fast House. It is time for the Pro Open category. And oh my goodness, we've got storylines aplenty. Jack Capella, Mark Tilly here with you. Mark, where do we begin with this show? I, you know what? Just like in the 125 moto, we got goosebumps. I mean, look at that gate. It is full of riders. We got Carson Brown, Ryan Villapoto, Justin Heff, Carter Dubach. They're all here. They're all going to do battle. And we have... It's an open race, so sure you got 125s in there if you want. You got 250s in there. You got 300s. You got 500s in there. And if there's anything bigger than that, we don't know about it yet, but look at the smoke rising from behind. If you could smell that starting line, it would be amazing. Oh, and we thank boys then for that starting grid right there. So many fast racers, so many motorcycles to talk about. Mark, I think as you appropriately put it, this event more about the bikes than it is the riders. And when let's focus in on Carson Brown and that yellow bike that you see with the big number one. Uh, is it a Suzuki? Why, I guess you couldn't say it's 100% <laughs> a Suzuki because it's an RMZ chassis with a KTM 300 motor out of Twisted Development. What the heck? I love it. Yeah, Jamie and the crew at Twisted Development built this bike a year ago. It didn't get raced last year. Carson was on a couple different motorcycles. Carson's a test rider for Dirt Bike Magazine. They've been hanging out at my house for the last couple weeks, and uh, I've seen probably six or seven different motorcycles underneath Carson in the last two weeks. And he got on this one, like you said, RMZ 250 chassis. Basically stock chassis with some some factory suspension kind of stuff going on. And then a carbureted 300cc two-stroke from KTM. And Jamie at, at Twisted Development has got that bike running 
amazing. Yes, he does. And here we go. 15 second card is down. We're about ready to blast him off. Whole shot. Here we go. Racing in the Talladega turn. The longest start in motocross. Who will grab the whole shot? Watch your defending champion, Carson Brown, up into Talladega turn. Who oh, is away with it? Carson it. into the inside on the Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah, that, that KTM-powered Suzuki is out front. I know Carson was a little bit uh, leery of running that number one plate. But we kind of talked him into running that number one plate. He says it's a big red number one target on his back. And uh, it's true. We got, it, I think that's Von Lossberg in second on one of those fast house YZ300s. 22 stories high up Mount St. Glen Helen. Right back down. Somebody down. As you can see, great aerial coverage here. Courtesy by Boyson Factory Racing. Our one, two, and three starting to shape up. Carson, definitely your leader. That's bad news for the rest of the field as he looks to go back to back and win this event in consecutive years as we continue to take a look at the great voice and factory racing drone coverage. Yeah, that drone coverage is amazing. We get to see some of this in the off-road off world that we do, but that drone coverage brought to us by Boysen is amazing. The other thing we need to keep in, in uh, the back of our minds is Boysen is putting up a fast lap. So whether you're in first, like Carson Brown is right now, or you're in last, the fastest lap of each moto will get the winner will get 250 bucks. Well, big shout out to Eric and the whole team there. I'm proudly have Boysen parts on my KX250. What a facility in Pennsylvania! What a name they have. They have been championed as some of the best when it comes to induction technology. The different cases that you have on the side of your motorcycle that last so much longer than the stock ones. Absolutely love them. As we take a look right now at Carson Brown, your defending event winner. That is a KTM. 300 carbureted two-stroke engine inside a modern RMZ chassis. Looks to be working to perfection. And we got battles all around this racetrack. We still got a long way to go here. Moto number one from the Wiseco two-stroke championship presented by Fast House. Over the finish line jump we go. Well, and right there, that's former Supercross champion and outdoor national champion Ryan Villapoto on his Fast House uh, PSD 805 backed YZ. I believe it's a 250 pro circuit doing all the stuff you can actually win that motorcycle you if you enter to win on fast house's website you can win that motorcycle no purchase purchase necessary i think he's running about third uh so we'll see how long he can stay up there the person in third i believe is dexter griffin he's one of those those ktm gas gas husky employees that does media stuff during the week and is out here riding his personal bike, going underneath Ryan Villapoto, taking that third spot away. But that is an employee out here spending his own money racing his motorcycle. And bad news for one of the all-time greats, Villapoto. You saw him look back. Ezra Lewis almost called him Ezra Lusk because he looked like <laughs> Ezra Lusk out there. Just got the pass on Poto. There's Poto right there, the big number two, uh, perhaps. Maybe not liking the bike setup or showing Signs of fatigue, arm pup could be creeping up on him. He's losing some positions out there. Well, and that looks like the next person that's going to get him is going to be Giacomo Redondi, who we also see in the off-road scene on his gas gas. So got a, got a weekend off, and uh, Giacomo decided he didn't want to not race, so he's throwing it down. Wow. Gotta love it. So much riding talent out here. And we talked about it in, in Moto Number 1. This is regularly regarded and revered as one of the most demanding sports when it comes to cardiovascular ability. I know wrestling up there, soccer up there, and regularly this sport is right up there. Oh, there we're banging we go. bars. A CR500. Is it a CR500 alongside Poto? It looks like it. That thing, well, if nothing else, that's a steel-framed Honda. So that's 30-year-old technology right there. But going, going up against a brand new motorcycle. Well, that's why I certainly don't want to dog the talents of Ryan Villapoto because we respect and revere him. But the point I was trying to make there is if his conditioning slipped down just a little bit, that arm pump can sneak up and get you here. Well, and Ryan's in, in dad mode now. He's, he's, uh, <laughs> he, he's kind of like me. He's out with the kids, and he's not riding as much. But, I mean, to, just to be able to hang with these guys for any amount of time is pretty amazing. And it looks like we do have – Ezra Lewis on that with that uh, orange MXA helmet coming up on him. He might have made him a little bit of a mistake, but out front, Carson Brown is flowing. Oh, it's going to be a tough day for the rest of the field if we keep this up. There's another look at the aforementioned former champion Ryan Villapoto. 
maybe he's deciding to keep that bike nice for the winner. He says, you know what? We're giving this bike away. Let me not beat it too hard. He's yeah, there's no way. There's no way. Ryan wants to win more than anybody out there probably. Maybe maybe not more than Carson Brown, but I know Ryan and Carson have been going back and forth with this and them both being from the Pacific North Northwest. So there, uh, th- there is no, uh, there's no give up in in Villapoto for sure. Carson Brown currently with the boys in fast lap so far. I'd like to know who's got the fast lap on an old school bike too. We might need to highlight that. That is so cool to see some of the '80s and '90s machines out here. Love it. Love what guys are doing in their garage too with the engineering and the innovation. I was telling you off camera, it's something we see in drag racing all the time. It's something that's coming to motocross, taking different engines, updating old bikes. Oh, oh, oh look at this battle! One, two, three, up the hill. So much elevation here at Glen Helen. Up Mount St. Glen Helen again, 22 stories to the top, and then right back down. Poto trying to hang on. Looks like he's going to get passed out there by number 43. His transponder must not be working because we don't see him. We don't see him right now. Uh, Another interesting story out there. Hopefully we get to see him at some point. Colton Eck, who won the 250 category last week at 29 Palms at NGPC. He's out there. Guess what he's on? KX500. Wow. Hatch Bros. I I think that number 43 might be Trevor Stewart. He usually runs a number 75. Trevor Stewart here um, as well from the NGPC series. But I think it might be Trevor Stewart. And that's one of the guys that we would expect to see up front. Man, Carson is just walking on Ooh. these guys. And there's, like we said, there's no shortage of talent on that line. Carson's got that by... The Twisted Development guys got that by dialed for him. All right. Now, Mark, I got, I got to ask you the tough question. With him being this fast, we got, we got to get Davey Coombs on the line. Why is this <laughs> man not making spot appearances in AMA Pro Motocross? I think he could hang. What do you think? Well, you know, I know. Oh! oh! Out of shape. Yeah, getting a little bit, little bit crazy there. I, I'm not sure who that is. That might be Hef. His, 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 his transponder's not working either, but, yeah, Hef is is uh, expected to be out there. I was thinking that that would, was going to be Von Lossberg earlier in the moto, but Justin Hepp, another one of those guys we're seeing on in the off-road scene on a Pervine, ta- or Pervine Yamaha. Um, Carson Brown, back to Carson Brown, his deal with Red Bull is basically to ride anything and everything, and it's perfect for Carson. Like, when I met Carson uh, a while ago, it was, he was riding, like, a 1983 CR480 for us at a Honda intro and going faster than they were going on all of the modern bikes. The kid can ride anything. It's amazing. It really is. It's cool to see somebody stay true to themselves as we take a look at second place coming around here uh, according to our live timing. Is that, that that's Griffin, Griffin Dexter? Yeah. Uh, he works, like I said, he works for the Pierre Mobility Group. So the bike that he is on is his personal motorcycle, um, but normal nine to five job. We see him a lot on the media side, prepping our bikes and, and, and helping us at the track and all that stuff. But it just shows the commitment that the company has. I mean, down to the people that are working there, they're out here on the weekend, just like Ryan Marias is riding his 150. It is very cool. And, and talking a little bit more about Carson Brown, you know, he comes from the Pacific Northwest up there in Washington, and he's so involved in motocross. I asked him the same thing. I looked at his dad. I said, are you going to move to SoCal? Are you going to come out here? They said, absolutely not. We love where we live. We're going to stay there. We practice all the time. He says he runs a whole lot of woods. That's, uh, you know, there's not as many options sometimes depending on where you live. Some people don't have the luxury of living right next door to uh, Glen Helen, like the great Mark Tilly over <laughs> here who gets to enjoy it all the time. But uh, Carson, certainly the woods training paying off for him because he's, he's got the speed to run with just about anybody. And he's checking out here at moto number one of the Wiseco two-stroke championship hosted by Fast House. Look at this battle for second, heating up. Yeah, and we got, we got modern technology against... 30-year-old technology right there. Again, we have a, it looks like a steel frame Honda. Don't know if it's a 500 or a 250 against, uh, it is a steel frame, but it's a, probably a, a newer 
gas gas 300 or 250 that's what i love it i I go back to what the great brian deegan said at the end of the day right wheels and handlebars they're all the same doesn't matter what year what power plant two stroke four stroke right now they're competing on an even playing field rider talent obviously having a lot to do with that oh and he made the pass that's that's luke uh castlin i believe um oh slapping the front fender going over the the finish line (laughs) jump Uh. The last person I saw ride a CR, an older CR this well, and it looks like a CR500, was Bo Barron. Bo Barron does a lot of off-road, a lot of off-road quad stuff. Um, and he he's the only other person that I've seen ride a CR500 this well. So Luke's in really good company. Yes, he certainly is. Carson Brown again with the fast lap. Just clicked down a second, 234. He's running, bettering his... Class leading 235. We'll see if the rest of the field can pick it up and has anything for him. Look at that old school. I think it's a 93 Honda. I spoke to those guys beforehand, and it is. What's cool to see the old bikes, the old liveries, but then they've got all the new updates, mm-hmm. the latest chain, sprocket, tires, wheels, everything that you'd expect. So sometimes we call those bikes in grudge racing sleepers. They look old, but they're <laughs> exactly. fast. Exactly. We get to we get to ride a lot of those when we do projects for the magazine. It's a it's a great thing. It's always fun to do. You you take a, a a newer front end off of a bike, or you retrofit a new uh, a new rear end to it. So it's definitely a fun thing to do. It's great to see a Suzuki out there. It, like yeah. wait, it's not going to be a Kickstart Kenny anymore. It's going to be Kickstart Carson, <laughs> <laughs> and he is flying. Look at him. He's, yeah, he's going around here in a fashion that I don't think anybody else is. It's clear why he's got the boys in fast laps, scrubbing everything, getting air in some sections where I don't see people getting air. It's clear the suspension's dialed in because that was interesting talking to his father, and you alluded to it moments ago. You you can't just shoehorn an engine in and expect everything to work right. With a different weight, the suspension of that RMZ was set up for a four-stroke, 450 engine. So a lot of changes had to be made once you put in the two-stroke KTM. Yeah, and I think that this suspension, uh, I think Jamie got it from the people that are doing the Bar X race team suspension. So... It's good stuff. They definitely have some some uh, good people working over there. Um, I don't know who exactly did the suspension, but I know it's the same people that are doing that Bar X Suzuki effort. Poetry in motion. Rider skill combined with a thoroughly dialed in motorcycle. Wow. And that is a one of one, folks. That's the one we've been talking about. It is not a Suzuki. A Suzuki chassis, but a KTM 300 engine uh believed to be about uh 2020 cases he thinks with the twisted development big board kit and look it's just roosting all over the place i don't yeah it's 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 amazing he, he didn't want to run that number one plate and and i i kind of look at most people get a number one plate and they can't wait to run it and uh so even jared hicks uh from backyard design usa decided hey you know what we're gonna take it to that next level we're gonna make it a chrome number one we're going to make the chrome accents in the back. So uh, I got to, it was a, a real pain shooting it in the studio because it was shining all over the place. But we'll have a full race uh, kind of report on this motorcycle and everything in an upcoming issue of the magazine. And it is, uh, now we're looking at Giacomo Redondi again. And that number 43 is Trevor Stewart. And fifth place for Giacomo Redondi, another one of the stars of the NGPC series that we just saw here about a little over a month ago. What a disaster that was. Buckets of rain, flooding, much better conditions here. It's something I wanted to talk about in Moto1 because I know we have people watching us worldwide, coast to coast. And, Mark, you can speak to this. You know, the inch or two of rain that we initially had for this event that caused its cancellation. Some guys back east like me, they're like, hey, we call that a little track watering. But out here in Cali and with all this elevation, it doesn't drain well. You guys aren't used to this. Sometimes it stops raining by April and it doesn't rain again. So really the, the move to move this race and reschedule this race had to be done or else we would have to cut the track. Yeah, it definitely had to be done. It, it's one of those things to where we're, we're not used to getting the amount of rain that we've been getting lately. And once the ground is saturated, because of all the elevation, it just flows off and it just takes everything with it. So, you know, now these conditions can't ask for better conditions. Looks like we got... Trevor Stewart's coming up on uh, Giacomo. Looks like he's going to make some some moves. And uh, Trevor, another fast guy here from SoCal. 
Carson Brown continues to lead the way as we continue here from the Wiseco two-stroke championship hosted by Fast House. There is Ryan Villapoto hanging on. Is fatigue setting in? This could be interesting as well. Taking a look, I believe, did Colton Eck get around him or is Colton Eck still behind him? I think Colton Eck is behind him on the KX500. Oh, man, Poto oh. getting a little loose in the corner. Seems like, I don't, I don't know. Is and it, that, that's got to be wearing him out. Wearing him out. Mitch built that motorcycle at Pro Circuit. And Pro Circuit builds some beasts of two strokes. Mitch actually did the grinding on, on that himself. And like I said, they're giving this bike away afterwards. So you know that bike's fast. So Villapoto coming straight off the couch and uh, <laughs> just kind of looking at it going, yeah, you know what? I can't hang with these guys for that long. But look at him. I mean, he's got the form. He's Most of these guys up front are riding all the time. Yeah, like I said, Villapoto's going to the track with his kids. His kids are riding. He's playing dad, so it's definitely. And at the halfway point, I don't blame him. If he's tired, I completely understand it. And I think this really drives home and accentuates just how highly conditioned these guys are when they're at the top of their game. Because we don't want to dog Ryan Villapoto at all. Let's be honest. If he shows up at probably any amateur day all throughout the country, he's going to be the fastest thing anybody has ever seen. But right now, Carson Brown and others have been training so hard. Their fitness level is so high, much like Villapoto's was back when he was winning championships, that he's just able to close the gap. But like you said, Mark, you, you can't you can't come off the couch on this sport sometimes and expect a good result. Arm pump is nasty. Sometimes the old muscle department calls the brain department, says, what are you doing? We're going to schedule a cramp here immediately. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it, takes, it takes a lot, a lot of time to get properly in shape. And I know this is something Jeremy McGrath talked about at the Vet Nationals where – He's still as talented as they come, but he said to continue to keep up with the fitness level that it takes to be out here is pretty wild. Well, and when you get to that level, those guys don't lose the speed. They lose the, the distance of how long they can maintain that speed. So it's, it's all about the making sure you can maintain that speed. And like you said, these top guys, they're in shape. Carson rides, when he comes to the track, he goes through five gallons of gas and is also always looking for more and is always ready to ride. I mean, it, it's an amazing thing. We need people like that, that just, I watch Carson after he comes home from, from the track and it makes me want to go ride. <laughs> so it's definitely, it, it's, it's a cool thing to see. It's a cool thing to see that the sport coming along. I think Carson's about 25 years old. So it's great to see. Oh, to be young. Carson Brown getting it done out there as we take a look. Followed by Justin Heft, another one of the superstars from the NGP series. Luke in third place. Giacomo Redondi in fourth. Trevor Stewart rounding out your top five thus far. We'll keep an eye on this running order. Remember, this is only moto number one. It's a two-moto format here at the Wiseco two-stroke championship presented by Fast House. Yeah, he's out there and just flowing. Ooh. Like he's got, like I said, he's got the the, the Red Bull deal, he's got the, the motorsports deal. He's got, you know, lots of good people behind him with, with Ryder Co. gear, Garnet, X-Brand goggles is uh, keeping his vision clear. Not really needing to keep that vision very clear. He's got, he might have pulled one tear off, but it, it's from, from a lapper when he's going by a lapper. So, you know, Carson, I, I'm really excited for him. And he's been on the Red Bull deal for about a year, maybe a little bit over a year now. And they couldn't have a better ambassador for our sport. Thank you, Red Bull, for giving this kid a shot. And, and now we get to enjoy all the different motorcycles he rides, all the different stuff that he does, and this guy is up for riding anything. Earlier this week, we had him riding an Arctic Leopard electric bike. Oh, my gosh. And a KTM 790, 890 adventure bike on the same day. <laughs> so it's he makes our YouTube channel uh, a, a, a blast to watch. And uh, we have our, our video guy, uh, Travis Fant, uh, making sure that uh, we catch everything that Carson gets to do. So, you know, it, it's the family is a great family. They own BBR Motorsports, so they're always creating new stuff. In the pit bike world, they're uh, one of the major companies to be uh, reckoned with, and it's just fun to see. Well, you just mentioned something, no pun intended. I'm going to call it a buzzword, electric. I had a premonition coming to the track. I, I hope it's not true. I, and I'm going to preface this by saying I'm not an electric hater. I'm welcoming it. I think we're going to see a lot of really cool fast dirt bikes that are electric. But on my way here, I'm like, wow, all this nostalgia, all these two-strokes. 
I thought, uh-oh, are we going to be doing this someday with gasoline engines, having the gasoline shoot out because everything is electric? Is that where we're headed in 20 years? Yeah, and I don't think so. I think that the uh, electric side of it, um, they're bringing a lot more uh, people into our sport. And usually they will they might start off on an electric bike and kind of like the Stay 6 and, and KTM has, has some stuff going on for the kids. And then just transition into a gas-powered motorcycle and get the love of a two-stroke and, you know, kind of go from there. So I'm excited about it. It brings a lot of people to the sport that maybe might not have come into the sport. So <laughs> it's kind of a – it's a it's a cool deal. I mean, they, you never know where they start and where they can finish. We've got the white flag out. One thing that I'm a little apprehensive of that's going to be maybe cool but also a little scary is, you know, as young dirt bike riders, we always had to keep the noise down or you get in trouble. You get the police called on you. Are there going to be people now in uh, urban areas with supercross tracks in their backyard on these electric bikes? There already is. Oh, God. I, I mean, I have a, a 14-year-old and a 10-year-old, and uh, my 14-year-old is gone on electric bikes. He's my electric bike <laughs> tester. So oh. he's gone in the in the the hills all the time, doing that kind of stuff, having fun, and it's that. But that's the great thing is that makes him a little bit better on his gas powered bike. So you can't can't hate on anything. It's bringing stuff to the sport, and the more people on two wheels, the happier I am. Amen. Good attitude as we wind up here. Final lap, moto number one for the open category. Carson Brown leads the way. Justin Heft, who we just saw moments ago. He is on the Yamaha, followed closely by Luke Trevor Stewart out there. Interesting. So, oh, look at this great battle here as we finish up the 636. Digging in. That is Luke currently running third. Takes the position back as uh, Giacomo trying to get around him. Trevor, who does have Yamaha backing, and I think that's Trevor right there. Is it the 75? That, that's Justin. That's, that's Justin Heft. He's currently running second. Don't know what year Yamaha Justin is on. Trevor actually on an 06. I expected him to maybe be on a brand new YZ250 because Yamaha, one of the few manufacturers, still staying with the two-stroke, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah. Well, and, and Trevor, another one of those unique guys, a great guy to be around. Like, Trevor Trevor will keep you on your toes fast. When he wants to go fast, he's fast. When when uh, he's a little off, just like in, with all of these guys, it, it makes a big difference. But Trevor, a great guy. He does he does some modeling and, and does some other stuff. He's he's He kind of thinks outside the box. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, he does. Like male modeling. Yeah, wow. yeah like I think hey, that I think the reason like why he's gone from – his normal 75 to his number 43. I heard it was because 43 is the company that he models for or something like that. But like I said, Trevor, always a great guy. Another great moto family just to be around. Uh, he's, he's sporting that new One Industries gear that, uh, that they just bring him back. But just another fun person to be around, just like Carson and his family. Well, how about that? Male models out here on the motocross scene. Carson Brown may be the model motocross racer today because he has put in a flawless boffo performance, and he is just a few turns away from getting the checkered flag here at iconic and legendary San Bernardino, California's Glen Helen Raceway. There he is on the KTM 300 RMZ Frankenstein. Your winner, moto number one, Carson Brown. Wow, congratulations. Amazing. Ryan Villapoto coming up through the pack as well. So happy to have him here. And we'll see in a little bit later on today who wins that YZ250. And also, don't count Ryan out to see if he may have something left for the second moto. Great job. It looks like half taken the second. There is Ryan Villapoto wheeling through this thing as he tries to bring it home. How happy is he that, that he's going to turn that corner and see that checkered flag? What if he's just messing with us, too? What if yeah. he's out there dog and moto number two? He hears us up here and just turns the wick up. You never yeah, know. That would be awesome. But it sounds like that uh, Carson Brown might be our fastest lap. So taking home that 250 bucks from the guys over at Boysen. I know that Eric at at uh, Boysen is, is all about helping out with the two strokes. And he's putting out some money, that's for sure. Shout out, Eric. Let's take a look at the boys in unofficial results here. Carson Brown gets the boys in fast lap. Your winner, Justin Heff, takes second. Luke in third. Trevor Stewart rounding out your top five. Giacomo Redondi all the way from Italy on the gas gas. He is in the top five as well. Ezra Lewis, Bryson Gardner, Ryan Villapoto coming at home in eighth. Griffin Dexter and how about top ten? His first time ever on a motorcycle that is older than him. Colton Eck, the cowboy, on the KX500. 
a great performance for him out here at the two-stroke world championship what a show and the best part mark it's only moto number one exactly and we, we looked we looked at carson brown coming off that track and uh he looks happy and ready to go for moto two wiseco two-stroke championship hosted by fast house rolls on after this Jesus Christ. To the Wise Co. Two Stroke Championship hosted by Fast House. And boy, if you could put on a clinic, if you could give a demonstration of how to dominate the open category, Carson Brown just did it. He joins us. Carson, congratulations. Tilly and I were just amazed at just how perfect that moto looked. How did you do it? Man, you know, I uh, just got off to a really good start and uh, threw down two really good laps and then just kind of maintained from there. Didn't want to do anything too sketchy. And, uh, yeah, just tried to ride as smooth as I could and look for lines for uh, second moto. And the big story, of course, you being on what we have affectionately called a Frankenstein, an RMZ with a KTM 300 chassis. How did you guys get that thing so dialed in? It's a one-on-one. It looked like a factory bike out there. Yeah, you know, the boys over at Twisted uh, built that thing and got it really dialed in. We didn't have to tweak on it too much. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the thing absolutely rips out here, and I'm super stoked with how it's performing. So huge thanks to those guys and uh, Motorsport, Red Bull, BBR, Dunlop, um, the whole crew, man. I, uh, I appreciate every inch of them. We were bragging on your conditioning. You could have fooled me because I heard you when you walked in. You said you actually had a little bit of arm pump there. Well, you couldn't tell from our perspective. Yeah, I mean, after those first two laps, I started pumping up a little bit, and that's when I was like, ah, you know what, I'm just going to smooth it out, and uh, luckily it went away pretty quick. All right, well, he's looking to go back to back. You got just a little bit of time, so we're going to let you go here. But what are you going to do to get ready for moto number two? Moto number two, we're just going to try and do the same thing, hopefully get a little bit better jump out of the gate. I had to leave the throttle on a little longer than I wanted to in that first corner. So um, hopefully make life even a little bit easier. Carson, congratulations, guys. How about it? He's looking to repeat his champion. He's already got one win in the books. We'll see what he can do as moto number two is coming up. And it is that time as we take a look high atop Glen Helen Raceway. Multiple categories out here competing. So many different racers from amateur, intermediate to experts. And I'll tell you, a lot of the great companies here as well. And that includes Doug Dubach Development. Mark Tilly had the opportunity to speak with Doug earlier on. Let's take you to that and learn a little bit more about Dubach Development. I'm here with Doug Dubach from Dubach Racing Development. 
Now, Doug's been around this industry for a couple years. Um, yeah, been a business owner for a couple years. Um, predominantly an exhaust company that made four-stroke pipes. When I worked for you, we were all about four strokes. We were developing two strokes, but we never brought them out. So in front of us are two-stroke pipes. So why now? Well, you know, we've been chasing this dream for quite a few years now, and it's just it was a struggle at first trying to get the stamp everything in the right place all at the right time. So it's just been a great opportunity for us to finally put it all together. We had some that we sold, little one-offs here or there a few years back, but we could never get production right. So now we've got the production going. Everything is uh, in stock and ready to go. Uh, obviously, this is uh, KTM Husky Gas Gas right here. And, uh, you know, we've got the Omaha's coming out almost right now. By the time you guys see this, we'll have everything in stock. Well, now, we'll just stop everybody. These are your stamps, your designs. Nobody's, you're not private labeling stuff from other people. This is your stuff. Yeah, you know, it's obviously the stamps are very expensive, very hard to come by. So we're using stamps from one of our friends and uh, no one in the U.S. But anyway, long time relationship, good buddies of mine. But so we've been playing around, trying to get everything just how we like it. And uh, here it is. And uh, we're ready to go. So there you have it. Dubok Racing Development is now in the two stroke world. It's going to be probably as good as their four stroke pipes. Maybe want to check those out. A shout out, Mr. Dubach, and all the great manufacturers helping us out here, all of our wonderful sponsors. What a show it's been, and the culmination is coming up next because the 15th annual Two Stroke World Championship presented by Fast House will be right back after this. Stay with us, guys. Open Pro Moto 2 next. <laughs> Work to ride, ride to live. At Boyson, we understand that winning isn't just a goal. It's a way of life. That's why our factory racing hard parts have been the centerpiece of American motocross and off-road racing since 1972. We've spent years perfecting our craft and pushing the limits of what's possible on two wheels. Are you ready to gain the factory advantage? Visit Boyson.com today. The podium is waiting. live stream is being brought to you by ABS Racing Shocks. Take control. Welcome back, everybody. Feel the speed. Glen Helen Raceway certainly is here at the 15th annual Wiseco Two-Stroke World Championship presented by Fast House. It is time to bring this baby home. Who is ready for a moto number two of the open pro category, let's take a look at our boys in factory racing starting grid where everybody here is wondering, can Carson Brown go back to back? But what we learned in the 125s, and it's something that motocross veterans will know all too well, Mark, is 
You cannot count on anything till that checkered flag waves. Mosman thought he was going to go one one here. We think suffered uh, some type of mechanical problem with exactly. his motorcycle, and that changed everything. Let's hope. Let's not give the announcer jinx to Carson Brown because he had a flawless first moto. But look at this field behind him: Ryan Villapoto, Justin Heft. I just spoke to him moments ago. They were making some last-minute tuning calls on the Yamaha with the tight turnaround here. They didn't even wash those bikes. They were out there just down in the suspension, playing with the carburetor a little bit. Carter Dubach, Giacomo Redondi, Billy Lee, they are all here. Trevor Stewart, keep an eye on him. I, I spoke to him, too, about your special shout-out you gave him for the male <laughs> modeling career. He told me 43 is his. It's his oh, business. See? How about that? So big so shout-out to him. It's not who he works for. It's him. <laughs> it's him. It's good, to, it's good to be Trevor Stewart, riding dirt bikes, modeling, and Right now, Glenn Helen is affording these riders a sight lap, a parade lap, and that is incredibly valuable because, like I said, there's a lot of amateur racing going on here, and these lines have changed. They're not prepping after every single moto. So, Mark, you know it all too well. How valuable is that parade lap? Yeah, it, you're riding around looking for something out of the ordinary. you got to remember these guys haven't seen this track for a couple hours now, and like you said, there's – there's all different ages and, and classifications that are out there and, and riding out there. So the track is definitely going to change. They did do some work before the second 125 moto. Maybe that happened between the first and second of the, the 250 moto. But it's important, especially because you don't want to hit something that can be avoided. For sure. Carson Brown's looking to repeat. Perhaps right now, if you're Heft, if you're Kalatsian, if you're Stewart, you're looking for a sneaky new line, something you can try to try to close the gap, to try to reel in Carson Brown because he was absolutely untouchable in moto number one. He did tell us up here that he suffered from a little arm pump. Hard for us to tell. He <laughs> certain, certainly didn't look like he was showing any signs of fatigue whatsoever. But uh, we'll see what happens here as we get set for Moto Number 2. What a great day it has been. We want to thank everybody involved with this broadcast. And it starts with all the fine folks from Glen Helen, the folks from Dirt Bike Magazine, our host, Ross Fitz Productions, and everybody with us. How about all the great sponsors? Poison Factory Racing Parts, ADS Racing Shocks, of Motocross Action Magazine, High Torque Media Group, Wise Co. Performance Products, Fast House, Yamaha, Pro Circuit, Toyota, and uh, Pasha, we got to give a big thank you to for really, really bringing up some big money. And, you know, Mark, you know this all too well as we take a look at Carson Brown. Uh, not everybody has that big money factory deal. So when you come to a race like this and there's a generous purse, how much of a shot in the arm is that to your program to be able to win some money? Oh, yeah. Being able to win money, all of these guys are, are putting it back into their program. Uh, Carson Brown, this is kind of what he does. He does one-off events like this on one-off motorcycles like what we're seeing right now. But it, it's great that Glenn Helen puts on these types of events like we were saying before. There's so many different types of events that are happening, happening at Glen Helen in a given week, I mean, you, you can go from off-road racing to motocross to a supercross style to some pit bikes, some electric bikes. They even had a Tough Mudder uh, event here a couple weeks ago with people that run around and want to run through obstacles and stuff like that. So it's kind of cool, that drone footage from Boysen giving us a bird's-eye view of the facility here at Glen Helen. Ample amounts of parking. All the stuff right behind the, the gate is our vendor row. The vendor row was packed all day long. Tomorrow they're going to have an off-road event here. I so love it. they're, they're going to shut this thing down right about dark and, and start working on the, the track and the course. And SRA is having an off-road Grand Prix here tomorrow. I which love it. I'm going to stay. We're going to stay and ride it with the kids and, and have fun. But, you know, this, this two-stroke event is an amazing event to be a part of. I think Lori and Bud for giving us the opportunity and then all the great sponsors like we listed with, with wise co and the guys from fast house pushing this event all the time. It's just an amazing thing that we can bring this type of stuff to your mobile device with, with uh, the, the live feed and, just a, a great thing to do. And speaking of the versatility, you saw moments ago those bleachers off in the distance. That's the short course track they run here. I'm proud to say just about all the talented men working this production right now have worked with me over at the Lucas Oil Short Course Series where I can say I sat here and watched Jeremy McGrath 
went on both tracks. I don't think there's many other places where I could say, watch Jeremy win on a Pro 2 truck off on the horizon. Watched him win right here many a times on many different motorcycles. And the question is, as we take a look at our very talented and stacked starting grid, who will win this one? Keep an eye on the red number one plate, the yellow Frankenstein, Carson Brown, looking to go back to back. Did get some information, too, about Justin Heff's bike. That is a uh, big bore. BBR, that is a twisted development. Yamaha YZ300, open pro here, no displacement limit. So because of that, a lot of these competitors using the big bore machines. Well, and I kind of look at it, and it's hard to think back to a bike that won this particular event in the open class that wasn't built by Jamie and Twisted Development. They built a lot of really great motorcycles, and... You know, the YZ300, I know we've done a lot of stories on what Jamie's doing, and he's doing a lot more than just bolting on a a big bore kit to that. So it's kind of nice. Yes, it is, guys. As the fans, the packed house here at Glen Helen Raceway, they've gotten everything they wanted. Certainly a show worth the price of admission. We thank all of you watching on the Dirt Bike Magazine YouTube channel. I think we had up to about 3,000 people watching live. The playback is going to be immense. Let us know where you're watching from. We see you. We see your comments. Thank you guys so much. A worldwide audience. And we do thank Glenn Helen for bringing you this coverage. What a tremendous race, a tremendous vision as we get set to go. The question is, does anybody have anything for that man? The number one of Carson Brown. Do you think they even washed that one off? Boy, it looks clean. It's hard to tell how dirty it got because he was out in clean air the whole time. <laughs> exactly. That's, that, uh, those backyard design chrome accent numbers are shining in the uh, SoCal sun. So, yeah, he looks pretty relaxed kind of uh looking like he's ready to go and knowing Carson he won't be content until he's out front and leading this again like we like he said in his interview he pushed for a couple laps and then got some arm pump and uh kind of rode it in so we'll see if he can do it this again if he gets out front that it looked like that thing uh hooked up really good out of the gate and looks like some of those bikes are starting up so we we are looking really close to the start of this second moto that is so cool and that brings me back to my childhood if you're in my age group you understand when everybody would start up their two strokes early to clean them out make sure you didn't foul plug you always had to worry about that you don't worry about that too much on these new fuel injected four strokes but this was all the rage 1995 guys this is the way it was doug henry came along with a yamaha 400 in the year 1997 that would quickly change the sport and what's cool about glenn helen giving a nod to the niche. They used to have the White Brothers four-stroke shootout here. That used to be the race that was a nod to the minority. Back then, there weren't too many four-stroke race bikes. Now, everything has switched around, and we hope, as as you and I have advocated back here, we hope two strokes come back. There's certainly a great place for them. They, they have their place in history. The card is up, ladies and gentlemen. 15-second card out. It is almost time for Whole Shot City. It is almost time to race into Talladega Turn, the longest start in motocross. About the blast off. Here we go. Who will get the whole shot? Moto number two. The gate is down. Keep an eye on Carson Brown. These big four two-strokes. Ooh, he looks it. like he's going to get it. Into it the 45-degree like banking. Who Got it. Oh, no. Yamaha comes out front. Oh, is it Heft? Is that it Heft? Is like it Stewart? Heft. That that looks like Heft. Oh, they knew they had to get to Brown early. Brown takes the outside. The door is shut as we race up the hill. 22 stories high. Mount St. Glen Helen. Listen to oh, the sweet the sound. Shut. Oh, my gosh. These two strokes absolutely rolling. Brown looks like he's worked his way up the second, so the no, I'm sorry, third. third. The two Yamahas checking out. This could really change the complexion of our overall. Second moto weighted more heavily here. Brown looking around. Does Brown have a problem with the motorcycle? Let's hope not. Or Brown's just wondering where did all this traffic come from? He's not used to being in this position. It could be he just picked the wrong line at the, at the bottom of the hill, but that's that's not like Carson to be, be looking around and seeing what's going on. So he's kind of dropped back a little bit and... It might be the difference between riding on a, a smoother track to riding on a rougher track, but I think Carson will gather, gather his thoughts and uh, get right back up there. 
He talked about some arm pumps sneaking up on him. Let's hope that's not the case right here. Carson Brown trying to work his way up. The good news for you fans, it looks like we're in for a dogfight. We're in for a battle. We've got a long way to go. 19 minutes plus left in this moto before we leave Glen Helen and figure out who the winner of the Open Pro category in the 2024 Wiseco Two-Stroke World Championship brought to you by Fast House will be. Yeah, it's going to be interesting with, with Heft out front. He's got clear vision and uh, can kind of... Oh, that's that might not be... Is it Trevor Stewart? we got to get a clear yep. look at the number here. It's, we'll it's a darker motorcycle. It might be Villa Poto. Villa, are you kidding me? The number two! We told you! Let's not count out the past champion. He may have something left in the tank. Was he playing possum in moto number one? It is Ryan. It is Ryan Villa Poto. Out front. He heard wow. us dogging him. He said, take this, Tilly. Take this, Corpella. I'll get the whole <laughs> shot, and I'll jump out in front. I'll show you I still got it. Oh, my. Remember, that's the bike we're giving away, the YZ250, as we welcome back the past champion, Ryan Villapoto. He's leaving it all out there. Here's the question. How long can he last? How long can he last? And as we just and said, that, he's giving away yeah, the motorcycle. That, How about that one? You can win this motorcycle. If you signed up on at FastHouse.com, you can win this motorcycle that just whole shotted uh, the second motor. Oh, oh he's, he's looking already back. looking That's back. That's not a good sign. That is not a good sign, but let's not jinx him. He's opened up a big lead. He's hoping muscle memory kicks in. I mean, this is a man. Help me out in the comments. What, what year are we talking about? 20, 2009, 2010 champion. That was when Villapoto rolled the roost in the sport. And he was dominant, dominant. when he did it. So. Now, now we have Ryan Villapoto, like we were saying in the first moto, straight off the couch uh, from Moto Dad duties to now, uh, now he's leading, led a little over a lap. Oh, wow! Sorry, I saw some. Sorry, I saw some. <laughs> I saw some head shake there. Thought he was going down. Uh, uh, kudos to the suspension on that Yamaha and the steering stabilizer and the talent of the one and only legend Ryan Villapoto keeping that thing up. What a story it would be as he crosses under the Yamaha Blue Crew Bridge. If the legend, if the he, Hall of Famer to be, could somehow hang on. Let's see if he could keep his tongue out of the front wheel. <laughs> this is amazing. This is definitely amazing. But it looks like Hef is, is kind of coming up on him, um, maybe getting the lay of the land a little bit better and, and seeing where he can make some passes and where, where, what he can do. And Carson's still kind of... Whoa, feet off the pegs. It's getting nasty out there. It's getting chopped up. We know Glenn Helen gets rough. We hear that over and over and over again, especially this late in the day. Ryan Villapoto continues to lead. Justin Heff on the big board. YZ300. He outside. goes to the outside. Fist full of throttle. Wide open throttle. Through the straightaway. Does he have enough? Here comes Villapoto, carefully cheering, choosing his lines. Villapoto, did he give it up? Your new leader, Justin Heff. Congratulations. I got to give a big nod. One of the NGPC stars that we try to talk about so much. I just talked to him back there in the pits, too. He said, hey, you're not giving me enough love in NGPC. Well, Justin, have, we're giving you all yeah. the love you deserve right here. That's what our producer says. You want the love? Go take the lead. He did so. Congratulations, Mr. Heff. Yeah, one. And Villapoto went a little bit wide. I think he's going to let Carson buy him. And Carson uh -oh. are pretty good friends. Uh -oh. So I think he's looking over... I think that tongue is in the front wheel. Oh, boy. But, hey, it's definitely a, a cool thing to see him to be able to run that pace. Now we're going to see a knockdown drag-out battle between Justin Heff and Carson Brown. Also heard from one of my spies that Mr. Villapoto could potentially still be nursing an injury that he sustained in practice. That could have a lot to do with it. It could be a lot more than just conditioning here in the wrist bothering Ryan Villapoto. Maybe we'll get more information after this. But as for now, Carson Brown on the Frankenstein, the KTM 300, digging in, giving chase. Can he catch Justin Heff? What is going through Heff's mind right now? You're leading this race. You know the man behind you. Checked out moto number one. How do you get comfortable? How do you settle in and just focus on you? How do you control that anxiety when you hear that big bad KTM coming hard right behind you? I, you know what? I think he's going flat out right now. I don't think he's. I I don't think he has a any any major strategy for it. I think that he's just going as fast as he can, and he's going to go as fast as he can for as long as he can possibly. And you know, w when you got somebody like Carson on you. You, you can't really think. Like, you got to just go for it. Twist that throttle and go. I believe that that might be a, another twisted development motorcycle. I know that Fast House has 
a bunch of Twisted Development YZ 300s underneath their uh, underneath their tent that Jamie just kind of keeps them going for stuff like this. And so it, it might be a battle of the Twisted Development motorcycles, but you know both of these guys extremely talented. Um, Hef, you know Heft's in good shape because we see him at the NGPC riding for an hour and a half. So we're we're definitely in for a good battle. Well, that's what I wanted to back up for just one second, Mark. And to our casual fans or non-West Coast fans out there, when we say NGPC, it is the AMA National Grand Prix Championship Series. I like to call it GNCC West. 90-minute motos. You have to be in tip-top shape. Justin Hep is. So we know he's got conditioning. Look at these battles. Colton Eck, wow. that's another gentleman from the NGPC Series. He's on a KX500 that's one year older than him, and he is getting it done. The Cowboy. Holding court on the big bore Kawasaki KX500. Yeah, there's battles all the way back to 10th. To we got, uh, I think we got Luke in 10th, and he was up there battling in the first moto. So definitely a, a lot of racing action. We, there's Trevor Stewart on that number 43 motorcycle. Looks oh. like he's going to go to the inside. And he made that pass on, on Colton. But, yeah, up front, it's, it's getting tight because we have – Heft and Brown just going past the finish line and, and uh, trying to pull it out a little bit, but there's Giacomo Redondi that we, we see on his gas gas. Tremendous racing here. We're not even halfway through. Moto number two. Can Brown catch Heft? That is the question. And it is so cool to see that old school KX500. That is the one that I mentioned out there. That's what's so special about this race. Modern bikes, new bikes, old school bikes, and traffic is getting heavy. Back there in about the about the 6th to 12th position, it is a dogfight. And let's not forget about that. We talk so much about 1, 2, 3, but bragging rights are at stake here everywhere. But none bigger than this. You're looking at the battle for first it is Justin Hepp out in front, that Yamaha YZ300 cruising up the hill. Behind him closely is Carson Brown. Well, and this is a winner's take all. This right here between these two guys is a winner's take all. If I believe, I think Hef got second in Moto 1 and Carson won. So as we were kind of going through on the, the 125 class, the second Moto means more here in Motocross. So if Hef is able to real or keep the lead, and kind of keep Carson behind him, he wins this overall. And did his team perhaps set him up for success? Because when I was back there under the Purvines tent, they were making a lot of suspension adjustments, fine-tuning, dialing it in. Sometimes, you know, a click here, a click there, that can make all the difference between moto number one, moto number two. Yeah, it, and it looks like Justin is pulling out a little bit on Carson. So, yeah, he sure is. You know, Carson might be looking for some smoother lines. Hef line selection might be a little bit better. That Pervine Yamaha might be those those uh, suspension adjustments that they made might be helping him out. We'll see because there's a lot of racing left. Oh, a little flat track action from Carson right there. But there's a lot of racing left. We're not even halfway through this thing. And uh, it, it's only going to get more exciting. What a great show it's been. What a great event it has been all the stars the past and present stars here ryan villapoto is still still hanging tough in third wouldn't it be something to see him hang on to this podium position the number two out there yeah that's just skill like uh, <laughs> how he just wheelie through that he's just kind of riding around and he's riding around in third place he's he's not it, it's not like he's going slow once the most dominant rider in the sport and I'm sorry. That skill set just doesn't leave you. Even even if you get a little lax on your conditioning, just like we saw here with Jeremy McGrath at the Vet Nationals, uh, that immense talent does not leave you. And Ryan Villapoto is clearly putting that on display as we welcome you in to this live broadcast. All of you watching, 3,500 live. Thank you so much. A new record for us, Dirt Bike Magazine YouTube channel. Looking forward to big views after. Thank you guys for all the shares. I think we had 350,000 views by the time it was all said and done exactly. last year and still counting. So thank you guys so much for being with us. And we are racing to a thrilling conclusion here, the Open Pro Finale, two-stroke nationals. There's a look at Ryan Villapoto holding third, but the battle for the lead remains between Justin Heft out of Pervines Racing on the Twisted Development. YZ300 just eating up 22 stories of Mount St. Glellen all the way to the top. But look at Carson Brown. Not, he's, I think he's closed the gap yeah, a little bit, Mark. He's, he's inching up a little bit, so maybe he's found some lines. Maybe maybe Carson thinks, okay, hey, it's, it's time to go. We're, we might be about halfway through. I know 
Dwayne Brown, his dad, is probably on the pit board telling him what's going on, and uh, he might he might have shaken off some some early arm pump like he did in the the other moto, and uh, now it's go time. Yes, indeed it is. Whoa! Oh, very very special. What a battle! Battle of horsepower, two three hundreds. It's the Yamaha versus the KTM. The aluminum chassis, modern RMZ. I believe it's a 2023 chassis. A 2020 motors. What do you think? Oh, uh oh, who who do we have here? Justin Heps, the fast lap, but somebody I think just went down. I can't see the number plate exactly. That looks like one of the MXA test riders. That might be. Oh no! Do we oh, have another, another bike one. problem with one of the nope. Pasha crew? No, nope, it's back and going again. Thank goodness. Able to start it back up. Oh, it's really closing up. And up front. Oh, my gosh, it is. And so the leader is has got the boys in fast lap as of right now, but that could change if uh, if Carson gets out front and wants to run him down, or these guys can push each other to go faster. Half is either getting tired or Carson has found another gear and said it's go time because that lead has evaporated. We are set for a battle. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The KTM motor oh. versus the Yamaha motor. Two 300s. Two finely conditioned athletes. Two supremely talented men battling here at Glen Helen Raceway. As Carson goes over the finish line, pulling that those uh, those tear-offs off his X-Brand goggles, just kind of nonchalant. Hey, we're just going to go race the motorcycle, and uh, maybe we're going to pass for the lead here. So it's definitely, you do see Hef making a, a couple mistakes, a couple key mistakes right there. Um, and it looks like Carson, like you said, is, is pulled right up to his rear wheel. So now he's, he's kind of studying him. He's studying where he's going, what he's doing. Now that he can see what he's doing, now he might be able to capitalize on a mistake. And it, as you said earlier, it only takes a split second. It takes one mistake to go from being in the lead and being the hero to being in second and uh, going home with a smaller portion of the purse. And Carson is the cerebral assassin. I am seeing him out there playing chess. Take a look at the different line selection. I, I know in that last shot, I've seen him take a few lines that I don't think we've seen him take today. He is experimenting. He knows he has to do something different. Perhaps seeing where the fast line is for a charge. Coming up later on, he's still got plenty of time. And my goodness, I would, I, I guess I would want to be in Hef's position leading this race, but the anxiety and the trepidation he must feel with that KTM closing in on him, it's got to be an uneasy feeling. Well, and look how rough that track is. Like, we're looking at drone footage, so we're looking at it from above, but look how rough that track is. These guys are making it look easy, and that's not easy. The section they just went down right there to drive home Mark's point about how you can't really see the elevation. Uh, that section, I slid the whole way down on my butt on the dirt bike day in the dirt on tennis shoes trying to walk it. I said, oh, I'll walk this track. Slid the whole way down. It is unbelievably steep, unbelievably slick, very hard packed here. It's rocky. It's it's almost it's almost like concrete with a thin layer of dust on top in some of these sections. Real easy to break loose. As we're breaking oh. loose on battle, it's the Suzuki slash KTM versus the Yamaha my goodness, Brown to the inside, Hef to the outside. He knows he's got to protect. Brown running out of patience. I think the time is now for him to make a charge. Look at this, different line. Brown has taken a different line almost the whole way around this racetrack. Yeah, and that's, if he can get by him, that's what's going to make it to where he can get by him is because now he's searching. Now he's got, Hef knows he's there. And the more of a wheel or the more sound that you can get into that guy, the, the better your chances of him making a mistake. Hep has been doing this for a long time, so it's not going to be easy to rattle him, but rattling in that cage is a way better way of trying to get to the front. I think Carson might have made a slight bobble there because Hep has been able to open up a little bit of breathing room, but this is where Carson is oh so fast. Let's see if it lasts. Carson seems to, last time he tried the inside line here, we'll see the experiments again coming into Talladega turn. I saw him last time on Talladega turn. He was almost into the Glen Helen cardboard boxes. He was so tight onto the inside as Villapoto continues to hang on to third place. Hats off to him uh, giving chase though somebody right on his tail as well we'll give you the official run order just as soon as we can 
according to our uh, unofficial live timing here, it's Hef, Brown, Villapoto, Bryson Gardner out of the beta team. Shout out to him. Did not realize that. I know Carlin Gardner, their PR manager and one of their really talented employees keeping a close watch on this race as well. I believe he's in Nashville tonight for Supercross. But trust me, all eyes right now on San Bernardino, California. Exactly. And all eyes on those top two guys, that YZ300 and that KTM Suzuki 300. We still got more laps left to go. What do you think? Let us know in the comments whether you're watching it live or on demand. Who's going to win this thing? Can Heft hold on or does Brown have a trick up his sleeve as we look to finish this epic two-stroke race? And look at there. Is that Heft right there? If that, it is. That's Heft. It looks like he's, wow. pulled, he's pulled out a little bit. So maybe Carson made a mistake. Where is um, Brown? Let's see if we, he was there. He just a, right out of the shot. Okay, there we go. Whoa. So Brown has dripped. Oh, that was <laughs> he's aggressive now. He knows he's running yeah. out of time. But Heft has really opened it up. Look at look at the, the different flow. Uh, it seems like Heft is maybe scrubbing some of these sections where Brown's so wide open throttle, he's catching air. And Carson, after they come down the hill, Carson has better lines in this section of the track. It seems like he, he gains a little bit. Um, I think he made a mistake on the, the open section or on the uh, start line section of the track. So I have got to get out a little bit on him. But it seems like in that section that we're looking at right now, Carson can flow a little bit more through there. So we're looking at the, the beta right now. Looking like he's, I those he's, are awesome bikes. He looks like he's going to uh, want to make a pass on Villapoto. Crazy impressed with Villapoto. Vi still, crazy, yeah, absolutely. Still running in third in we're, we got to be a little over halfway through this thing, and that's uh, that's pretty amazing. And taking a look at our run order too, uh, Luke Kalatsian, who was a podium finisher, he's way back in 20th. Again, just shows the unforgiving nature of the sport. How one moto can go your way, and a disaster can strike in. Also looking to see where Trevor Stewart is exactly. He was fourth in moto number one. Uh, this is alphabet soup. We've got guys scattered all over the place from, from one moto to the next, and Villapoto trying to hold off that factory beta. Yeah, except for the top two guys. <laughs> he oh, here went a little bit wide. He's letting that go. Poto He's letting goes that wide, go. But Poto back to the inside. And gosh, you're talking about uh, Mr. Villapoto, a guy who has beaten James Bubba Stewart, a guy who has beaten Chad Reed, a guy who has beaten some of the greatest racers in the sport. Still out here getting it done. Big congratulations to him on a bike that's going to go to one lucky winner. My goodness, I want that bike. We all want that bike. Yeah. Who wouldn't want that YZ250? Very, I, very cool. I signed up for it. <laughs> hey, I guess you're eligible. I missed the call on that one. But we'll see who wins it here as uh, Bryson now let loose. I don't know if he's got enough time to close in, but again, they take the inside line on Talladega turn, 45 degree banking, and then boom, you head right into this left hander right here and you start heading up the mountain. And that's when you just twist it wide open and use every single bit of horsepower you have on that motorcycle. White flag coming up and Heft has opened it up. We could be witnessing the dethroning of a champ. It seemed like a foregone conclusion after moto number one that Carson Brown was going to go back to back, but Carson quickly running out of time and moto number two is the tiebreaker. So Heft here looking to go 2-1 on the day. I'm sure that pit board is out telling Whoa, him exactly what he close. needs to do. He's getting tired, but he's still got a nice, nice comfortable lead. Yeah, it looks like right about now he's got a little over a lap if they come around this time and, and get that white flag. Um, it, it'd be pretty. We, we did think that, that Carson was just going to kind of come out and walk on the second moto, but different track conditions. But Carson's Carson's putting in the work right there. We're we're here, we're going to go down to the, the final turn, I, I would say. Just like in the 125 class. Less than three minutes a lap, so we've got about three minutes left remaining in this race. That's the time Carson Brown has left to make his dream a reality. Or will Justin Hepp out of Purvines Yamaha keep it going as the white flag waves? This is it. Last chance. Mark Tilmer. Tilly, put me inside the mind of Carson Brown. What's he doing right now as he knows he's got one more lap to make it happen? If he's got anything up his sleeve, now's the time to do it. Carson's going to put it all on the line. He's going for broke. He wants to win. He's been thinking about this for a long time. And if you're Justin Heft, you're thinking, 
how am I going to keep this guy behind me? Because he's going to be an animal on this final lap. Checking those inside lines, making sure that you don't leave the door open for anything. This is going to be good. I think that white flag was a massive motivator for Carson Brown because he quickly made up a lot of distance. He's down to about four bike lengths right now, all the way inside. Almost oh. taking out the cardboard box I talked about. Sliding it out. Looks like a flat track racer. Here we go. Heft to the inside, Brown to the outside. It's a horsepower war up the hill. These 300cc machines screaming, giving it everything they got. Man, Heft seems to pick up a little bit on him here. Yeah, it's it, it's hard. Uh, I got to keep telling myself, you got to keep talking because this is amazing racing action. After 20 minutes, it coming down to less than a second between first and second place, and this is for everything. The winner of this is going to take home the biggest purse or biggest portion of this purse and all the bragging rights yes indeed heft the hometown boy brown from the pacific northwest comes out of washington and he's giving it everything he got oh a lapper coming up mark this this could i don't see any blue flaggers out there either this track is so vast it's hard to flag the whole track finally the lapper has got the memo there's a battle you're not in it it might have slowed heft down a little bit this might be the break that brown needed here he's comes gonna brown. go for it here comes brown to the outside did the lapper help give him a christmas present we'll soon find out a few more turns left to go to bring this one home oh. look at the roost look at the loam he's got four more turns Oh my to make gosh. it happen. Can, Can Carson make it happen? He's going to probably go to the inside here. And then depending on where Heft goes here, he might go to the outside and try to sweep around the outside. Oh, but look time at this. is running out look around the outside. This is it, guys. Racing to a finish. Multiple line choices. Does Brown have Those bikes anything are left? all over the place. These 300cc machines singing. This is it. The culmination oh, of what has been an awesome day. Final We've got a turn. track race. We're oh. setting up for a track race to the finish. It could be thousands of us. Oh, oh Brown. Oh, my God. Brown's down. And Brown's he went down. for it. Brown's down. Half takes the win. Does Brown have enough to pick it up and take second? Oh, my gosh. Major mm. implications here. Can he get it across the line in time? Bryson coming behind him. Brown's going to take a second. But your winner, 2-1 on the day out of Purvine's Yamaha. He told me before this moto, dude, you don't talk about me enough. Well, Mr. Heff, you've just earned it. Yeah, you we're going to talk about you. <laughs> of the town. We're talking about you. You just won the Wiseco two-stroke championship brought to you by Fast House. What a show. What a performance. My yeah. goodness. Everybody's got to have their heads up there. You, Carson gave it all, went into the last turn, gave it all, went down. Left it all out there on the track with great racing, great clean racing. We're going to have uh, the, the entire podium up here to be able to talk to him. But just an amazing race, and thanks a lot to everybody involved. Celebrity appearance by Pink waving the flags. Thank you so much. Celebrity appearance by Boys and Factory Racing. As we give you the unofficial results, Justin Heft taking the win. Carson Brown second. Bryson Gardner. Hey, shout out Team Beta. Beta. And how about the legend Ryan Villapoto coming into fourth. Giacomo Redondi rounding out your top five. Colton Eck on that Kawasaki. And let me not skip over Trevor Stewart as well. He brings home a sick. Carter Dubach. Uh, Griffin, Dexter, Matthew, Hubert, they all brought their A-game. They all put on a show, and man, I, I still got chills. <laughs> I hope you can smell the premix wherever you are watching from. Guys, we got to keep these two strokes alive because battles like this are just way, way too fun to watch. Yeah, no, it's definitely just one of those things to where you don't get that kind of battling going on at your local track. Glen Helen, a local Southern California track, putting on great events, Time, time after time. What a tremendous show. We will sort it all out after this. Don't go anywhere. We'll hear from our winner. Stay with us. The Wiseco Two-Stroke MX World Championships presented by Fast House will return right after this. Work to ride, ride to live. At Boyson, we understand that winning isn't just a goal. It's a way of life. That's why our factory racing hard parts have been the centerpiece of American motocross and off-road racing since 1972. We've spent years perfecting our craft and pushing the limits of what's possible on two wheels. Are you ready to gain the factory advantage? Visit Boyson.com today. 
The podium is waiting. What a day it has been here from beautiful Glen Helen Raceway, San Bernardino, California. The 15th annual Wiseco Two-Stroke World Championship presented by Fast House was everything we thought it would be and more. How about that battle that we just witnessed between Carson Brown and this man? Got to shake his hand, Mr. Justin Heff, Pervines Yamaha Racing. Incredible battle out there. What was it like just going back and forth with Carson Brown? Yeah, dude, he got me good in the first photo. He was riding really fast, and I knew that uh, I needed to start in front of him, and I just needed to stay in front of him until the checkered flag. He was uh, he's riding good. He showed the front wheel on me a couple times, but uh, I edged him out, and I'm pumped to finally win uh, here at the two stroke race. It's my first time getting the um, open open win, so I'm super stoked about that. And uh, dang, that was a hard race. I'm not gonna lie, he was pressuring me hard, so. I'm super stoked to keep it together and get this win. Well, you put on one heck of a show right before the moto. I saw your whole Pervine Yamaha team down there making some adjustments, making some fine tuning. Do you think any of that paid off and was the difference here in moto number two? Dude, honestly, the difference was uh, us getting a parade lap. I don't know what happened on the my whole shot device got stuck and it, uh, it, it wouldn't unlatch. So I had to come back and we had to dismount it and I had to do the start with no whole shot device. But I was hungry for that good start. So uh, I made it work, and we, we got off to a good one. Well, awesome. As we were talking about during the broadcast, we know you're one of the stars of NGPC. We know you've done a lot, but you are now the winner of one of the most illustrious races out here. How would you rank this in your career in terms of your accomplishments? Oh, dude, uh, get, getting any win feels good. You know, it doesn't matter where it is, but to get it here, I'm pumped. Just to check that one off the box, say hey, I did it. Um, and, dude, I, wish, I wouldn't be able to do it without my whole – Pervines Racing Yamaha, uh, Twisted Development, built me a fire bike. Um, Fast House, we put in the race on. Um, dude, everybody else. Enzo Suspension, Hammer Nutrition, Dunlop Tires. Clark uh, swapped out the tires for me. Twisted did a motor swap before, uh, before today. So uh, just everybody coming together and helping me out. It feels good to get the win, and uh, I'm stoked. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. How about it for your winner? What an amazing battle it was. Treated us to some horsepower theater, that is for sure. And that's what you want. Whether you're a spectator here live, whether you're watching on YouTube, you want to see a good battle. Rubbing is racing, as they famously said in Days of Thunder, and we certainly saw a lot of rubbing. And I'll tell you one man who has absolutely nothing to be ashamed about, a man who's going to come out of here with his head held high last year's champion winner of the first moto and a man who just nearly nearly won it again but what an incredible battle out there Carson what was it like on that last lap man it was uh, it was gnarly from start to finish he uh 
he edged me out on the start, him and RV, and uh, I was like, okay, I'm going to sit back, watch these guys' lines, because I know they know this place, like, really well once it gets rough. I know the second moto was going to be tricky for me, but, uh, yeah, I got behind, uh, got, got behind Heft, and, uh, yeah, I just tried to follow his lines, figure out what he was doing, and, you know, I had my spots where, like, I was a lot faster than him, and then he had his spots where he was a lot faster than me, and uh, he... The thing that he was doing is, like, I was sitting back there waiting for him to make a big mistake, and he never did. And so, yeah, those last two laps, I was like, I better pin it because he ain't going to make a mistake. And, uh, yeah, I gave it my all, uh, kicking myself a little bit for not pushing a little bit harder midway through that moto. Uh, but, man, I got to give it to him. Like, we were pushing way harder than that first moto. So, um, yeah, I gave it my all out on the track, did my study, and we'll be back, uh, be back with the – yeah, be back ready for next year. Well, very cool. Like I said, you've got nothing to be ashamed of. We could see all the different lines you were taking. It was so fun to watch. We'll watch it on the playback. Outside, you were taking lines. I didn't see anybody take today. So congratulations on that and your courage. What's next for you? When will we see you out again? Uh, you know, what's next for me is I might, uh, I might show up at Harrisburg at this point, just hitting a bunch of fun stuff. You never know what, uh, what I might show up to, but um, just got it handed to Jamie and the whole Twisted Development Racing crew. Thank you so much for uh, letting me rip that bike over this weekend. Had a ton of fun on it. BBR Motorsports, Dirt Bike Magazine Motorsport, uh, Red Bull, Maxima, uh, Ryder Co. Thank you guys so much for uh, yeah, making this thing happen because we were having fun all the way around the track battling it out. Carson Brown, great ride. Love it. And one of the best stories here today. Congratulations, guys. Wish him well in the comments. How fun was it to watch that Frankenstein get it done? And I'll tell you, another competitor who really brought it today on the gas gas is Giacomo Redondi. My goodness, you had to earn absolutely everything out there. Uh, it was just such an amazing battle. It was so impressive to watch out there. I, what, what, a crazy, what a crazy race this was, sir. Tell me about it. So yeah, I got off a very good start and uh, I try to stay relaxed and hit my line because I'm racing three classes today. I'm racing the 30 plus 125. I got fourth in the Open 125 Pro and third in the 250 Open. So I'm pretty, pretty stoked about that and thanks, thanks you guys for having me here. And uh, yeah, now looking forward for the second moto of the 30 plus and uh, try to do my best. As, and jump on the box again. Hey, there we go. That's the way. That's the way to celebrate. Well, we were talking about fitness all day. We we're also talking about NGPC. They'll be down at uh, Paula next week. The ninety-minute motos. D do you think racing? You being a superstar of that series, did that really help you here with conditioning? That you just you don't seem tired. You don't seem tired right now. Not really tired, but you know that we, here we sprint uh, a lot, so. For sure, the, you, you will feel more the heart here, Very cool. <laughs> right here. Well, how do you stay in such great shape? Uh, you know, riding and training as much as I can, and uh, especially during the week. And, uh, you know, in the, in the weekend of racing, especially at NGPC, we do around four hours of riding. So you keep in shape. <laughs> well, great job. I know you got another moto coming up, so... Big congratulations. What's your feeling now? Do you feel like you've got house money already? Does it give you more confidence going into the next moto? Whatever happens, happens. Yeah, let's see because now the last moto is going to be again with the 125. I will uh, try to give my best and uh, let's see. Now, the first moto was a nice battle with uh, Ryan Moray and uh, Michael Essie. So we're both were my idol. So I was th overthinking too much. Now, now try to be more focused and uh, try to see you later here again. Congratulations. Great job. We'll let him get ready. He's got another moto. We told you lots of racing left here. There's amateur racing. What a tremendous show it has been. Boy, that was, that was like I said, worth the price of admission. I hope you guys enjoyed every single second of that. Like I said, the only thing I wish is I wish you could smell it. Maybe we'll work on that technology where we can just blast two-stroke into your living room. Maybe, maybe your mom or girlfriend wouldn't appreciate that. Maybe they would. I don't know. I've seen some cool moto women out here as well that uh, prefer the two-stroke cologne, as we like to say. But my goodness, just all around, Glen Helen, tremendous event. All the sponsors, Fast House, Wisecope, Poison, all the big sponsors that have put this on. You guys are, are absolutely awesome. It takes, uh, it takes a whole army, and really, I wanted to again thank boys in ADS, Glen Helen Raceway, Dirt Bike Magazine, Motocross Magazine, High Torque, Wiseco, Fast House, Yamaha Pro Circuit, Toyota, everybody who made this happen, Mark Tilly. I'm so happy to be a part of it. It is awesome. I love it. 
your final thoughts about this great race, sir. My final thoughts are, I can't believe we can bring this out to people. Like, all of the sponsors, all the people involved with it, you, I, the whole production crew that nobody gets to see that's doing an amazing stuff and has been doing amazing stuff for the last four days. I can't believe that somebody can watch this in a different country on their phone like, share, comment, do whatever you got to do to make all this stuff sun, uh, so people see it. But it's just an amazing thing. Thank you to Bud and Lori for the crew. Amen. Thank you guys so much for Bud, Bud Felt Camp here from Glen Helen. Lori and Chad Ross Fitz Productions, our producer Trevor Hawk and Kelly on audio, the whole crew. I'm Jack Rapella from Cycle Drag YouTube. He's Mark Tilly from Dirt Bike Magazine. Guys, give it a share. Watch it on demand. It was awesome. We'll see you next year at the 16th annual Wiseco Two Stroke Championship hosted by Fast House. What a show it was. So long, everybody. Keep it smoking. Two strokes for life.